Never mind me while I'm stepping out my circumference. I feel the nerves trickling down. It's life humbling. My words start a stumbling, staggered on court of God. It's the life of a jiggaboo introverted and scarred. Whoa, my mother been the melodies while they sing the choruses. Direct messages from slaves saying we need more of it. Paranoia in my state. I see envy at high rates. Now it's crop off the fate. Turn great, so I fly straight. Was gone for a minute. Now I'm back like an ex with big factors. I see you turn flat like an extinct like some raptors. When I drop through prayer purposes and practice and patience, we move the greener path. They're saying life is a matter of mastering basics and mastering paces More time I get tired of waiting Maybe it's fate procrastinating The times are bad short It really had me sprung Like she got me doing things that I never do huh. You thought that we connected When in fact it was trauma bonding Just leave it up to me to break the rules Never corresponding My childhood filled with fence climbs And knee scrapes and bikes And kicking it by the street signs The older I get I'm trying to lessen any screen time The bounce back heavy I rock steady on climbs This world's a fucking loop The news will pick and choose Whatever truth they want to give to you I cannot stomach my kit so I put Oops, when life turns sweeter, the lemon mouths get louder. But I'm amplified with ghosts from God, like that boy Fowler. Working like I got that point to prove. But truth be told, the proof is right in the pudding, no point to lose. Uh, 60 for the crepes, yeah, I did that just because. She expected more, girl, you know I'm saving up. Left me on red, well, it was what it was. Never stress over them joints or in downs when times get rough, so I ghost. Long are the days when we was close, and when I see you, it's like two completely different type of ghosts. I approach the weekly fire dropping, which I'm feeding. Still, I don't expect to be the one your boy having fun. Still the songs get spun like bay blades and teacups My fun fair to those that ever really know me from jump So what's up, huh? I've been the one they all depended on like TJ Now they're dead wilder than a free knockout punch Leaving them s Guys, big up everybody in the damn building, whether you're on YouTube, whether you're on Twitter, whether you're just passing by, whatever the case may be, first and foremost, make sure you do smash that like button. I'm joined this afternoon. You guys already know what we're here to talk about. It's in the title. Been speaking about it over the last couple of days after the news of Liverpool have apparently agreed a deal in principle for Sporting Lisbon manager Ruben Amma Rim. Now, there is one person on the panel this, this afternoon who's going to be extremely happy, you know, with this news. It is the person who has been championing him, and I have to give him his props. He has been talking about him for a very long time, when nobody else was, to be fair. He was the only one that I heard. And in fact, no, there's actually two, to be fair, who've actually been speaking about him. Um, you know, in terms of the type of manager he is and the fact that this could be a manager who could do well in the Premier League, whether it was at Liverpool or another club. And I'm joined also by my boy, the Salah hater that is next to me on the on the panel. Uh, but big up, ends, Michael, Tom, thank you guys for joining me this afternoon. How is everybody doing though? Good. I didn't like that intro, bro. I only just asked the question. It's all I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I did, I didn't like that one but I'll let it go, all good bro, all good appreciate the invite man come on man, every single time man, Mike, Tom how you guys doing bro man all good, all good but, uh, very happy with news that's, you know, being drip fed at the minute Um, I'm getting ever closer to my final victory over a lot of people who doubted me yep, very true <laughs> very, very true, Mike how you doing bro, how are you man not much man Doing this Champions League night again. Wish Liverpool were in it, but other than that, I can't lie. I did share a tweet the other day where I did talk about Amorim in 2022. Yeah, I said he would yeah, be the yeah, perfect man. For, I, yeah, I said yeah. he, he would be the perfect man for Chelsea, and now look what's happening. Now Liverpool are going to get him instead. So hey, you know what? Good thing he didn't go to Chelsea because his career would have been dead. We yeah. all know what we all know what happens when you go to Chelsea. Your career dies. But yeah, 
Should be a good discussion because we're going to get G to convert to the Amorim way. Screw the dessert. You don't want the vanilla latte, bro. You need to go old school espresso. All, I like and that is Amorim. Latte. First of all, I like vanilla latte. <laughs> we all do. They're, they're, <laughs> they're pretty good. But nah, look, guys, I big up everybody in the chat. I will get to the comments in a minute. So big up everybody who is inside. Please make sure you are smashing the like. Everybody on the panel is on my featured channel list. So don't waste time. Once this video is done, don't leave just yet. Once the video is done, make sure you head on over to everyone here and subscribe to their channels. <laughs> Look, we I was speaking to the guys obviously backstage in the back office about what the you know what the what the talk was going to be today. Of course, we know we're talking tactics, etc. And this is where I kind of leave the floor to you know to uh, to everybody else really and truly because they'll be the ones to really school me. But I think for all of us, and I said this backstage, this is more about learning. If if it looks like he's going to be the manager, let let let's not let's not let's not lie to ourselves. If the, if he isn't, then I will be very angry because I've just wasted a lot of time doing a lot of research on someone, and I am not trying to waste all of that time. But more importantly, I think it's for the fan base as a whole. We've seen listen, loads of content creators have spoken about you know Amarim. Um, in terms of the formation that he plays and this, that and the other. And these are the type of Liverpool players. And we will be talking about that later on as well. But I think more importantly is looking both at the strengths and weaknesses of Amarim's tactic and him as a person, which, of course, these guys will be able to tell me a lot better. What will work in the Premier League? What will he have to change when he does come to the Premier League? What positions might be up for grabs, potentially? Is there a, is there a player in the team who we would class as a first 11 player who might not be that guy come next season, I'm not saying any names. So yeah, man, that's why I wanted to do the stream. And that's why I kind of wanted to, you know, get, get, get things kind of started. But just before we, you know, we dive in, big up everybody. I'll run through the comments real quick. Big up K-Mac in the damn building. Big up Michael. Uh, KLN Sleepy. Yep. Big up, man. Big up. Big up GOAT since 1997. Uh, Michael saying, Tom and Michael, preach to G. Make him turn away from the Zerbi. Don't worry, Michael. We got it. <laughs> I'll leave that there. Big up JV in the building. All right. I have to start with I have to start with Tom because he's the one who I've heard anyway. I know that obviously Michael as well. But Tom's the one who's really been pushing when we were having the conversations about Klopp and we were doing... Um, the therapy sessions on Hussam's show. I and mean, the thing is, what, why Tom is going to be the victor at the end of this is because when Tom was mentioning him, he would have been on nobody's lift. I, I can't think of anybody who would have had him on, maybe like one or two people, like who would have had him on the list of, okay, this could be a new manager if Klopp was to have gotten sacked last season, etc. But most people didn't really care about him, blah, blah, blah. And Tom kept telling people, kept telling people. But of course, it's Jurgen Klopp. So people probably just didn't really want to hear it. Now that we know Klopp is definitely leaving, now we're trying to hear it. You know, so Tom, chat to us just a little bit, just kind of, I guess not background, but just on Amarim, why you feel he is the best man to really take Liverpool forward. I remember when I first watched Amarim football, he, um, I was in uni in 2020 and... One of his flatmates was, he was a big European football guy, came in to the uh, kitchen one day and he was watching Sporting versus Porto, mm. or it was sport, it was either Sporting versus Porto or Sporting versus Braga, and I'd never watched a Portuguese game like that before, and he kept telling me the Sporting manager, um, I'm gonna be, he, he's he's so good, you gotta you got to keep your eye on him, and I'm, you know what, fair enough, yeah, let me watch this, watch the rest of the game, they won, and I was like, ooh, okay. Kept on watching afterwards, kept on keeping an eye on him. And it just, I've been so impressed with everything he does. Mm -hmm. What I want from a Liverpool manager is someone who is a winner, can work under a budget, can work with youngsters, has charisma about him. Like all these factors that I, I need a Liverpool manager to have, he's had an abundance. He He's won a league and three cups already on course for yet another league and cup double. He's made 120 million euros profit in his managerial career, despite and he's constantly having to sell his best players and 
replace them with new players and develop them in a position where they can be at the level that he's just lost. Um, obviously, the developing youngsters part, if you list off the names he's had in the past, players that he's had a hand in developing, it's a very, very good list of players who've who've had tutelage under him. And even just today, uh, Victor Jokic as his agent come out and said, the reason why he chose sport and over any of the other propositions he had was because of Amarim and how well he develops the players and the fact that Jokic would hit a new level under him. I can't think of much better praise than that. Um, in terms of his charisma and his mentality, the sporting fans love him. He had to overcome a lot to become to, to, to win them over being a former Benfica captain. He'd done that in six months or less. You know, every box you could want taken from a local manager, he ticks. And his style of football is the most likable for me. Uh, we all have preferences on the style of football we like. So I feel like, like like that's bottom of my list because you know what I like is different to what all of you could like. But in terms of what I like, fast paced counter attack and football that can be direct when it needs to be, can be short when it needs to be, but is mainly set up about being defensively solid. That's exactly Amram's football. And I love that. I love pretty much everything about him as manager. There are some little question marks, especially tactically, but every manager has question marks tactically. Correct. So um, I'm sure we'll get into that, but on, on a base level, he ticks every box I hope once. And I have no doubt that when he makes that next step up, hopefully he's at Liverpool, when he makes that next step up, he'll, he'll adapt just fine because all the key aspects are there. This isn't a flash in the pan like Vyash Boas because he, Amarim has not had a team like Vyash Boas has. Amarim has had a team that never won a league title for 19 years and he's turned them into this team. He's turned the team that was finishing fourth and third with no shot at the title, into the best team in Portugal across the last four years. That's impressive. So he's doing it. He's doing a Jurgen Klopp, but over, over in Portugal. It sounds like. Which, at the end of the day, listen. Look, if we can, I guess if we can get something similar, like if we can get similar, but maybe a bit more in terms of we we now want trophies. We know we're a good team. Do you think that he is the one who could potentially be that? I don't want to say the name. We all know the old Liverpool manager who followed the legendary Liverpool manager. Mm -hmm. But obviously, relative to time, context to time, do you think it could almost follow that type of pattern with our... I, I hope so. He's certainly got all the minerals too. I mean, he's won a trophy in all but one of his years in management. Mm -hmm. That That's incredible. He's, he's This is his fifth season as a manager. He won one in his first 10 games as a manager with Braga. Yeah. Then done a league and cup double in his second season. Then won the cup in his third. Didn't win anything last season and is now on course for a double this season. He's on course to average six trophies in five years. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's in the Portuguese league, but he's not got the best team in Portugal. He never has done. So achieving what he's achieved is impressive. So yeah, I, will it be to the same level that it was back then? Probably not because yeah, no, no, no. football yeah, is more competitive now. But I don't yeah, yeah. doubt that you could be seeing regular trophies under Amarim should he come in and get everything right you guys heard hey first man Tom said that we will be winning trophies uh, Michael <laughs> move on to you quickly what is it that you like obviously I, <clears throat> I saw your tweet earlier on where you're talking about he could have been uh, he'd be a good manager for Chelsea uh, obviously this is before they obviously get in get in Pochettino first of all why and do you think he could be a good manager for Liverpool, like, do you kind of see that this is almost the perfect job for him moving forward? Well, actually, that was before Potter when I oh, said that Amorim should go. Yeah, before Potter, because I just thought oh, he's a dude who can act. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, no doubt. But I mean, Chelsea's a dumpster anyway, as we know. Mm. I think he's just a manager who can handle pressure. Mm. I think he's just that sort of guy. Like, I don't think people, if you kind of do more like research on like the history of Amorim, Sporting paid 10 million for his release clause, which is I I think the third or fourth, third or fourth highest in football history. Because what he did in 20 games as Braga manager is beat Porto twice, beat Benfica away for the first time, I think in 60, 70 years for Braga, and beat Sporting. So he beat the big three in first 20 games. And Sporting said, Oh, that's cool. That's enough for us. We'll go pay the release clause. And the release, uh, this see when a Portuguese team is doing that, you know that you're a good manager and that he's highly rated. You don't just do that for some bum at 
uh, Paco de Pereira or Victor Victoria Guimaraes. None, none of that. No, 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 no. If you're doing it at Braga and you're beating the big boys, that means you're you're a special manager. And I think when you have that sort of pressure of okay, we paid this much money for you, we paid your release clause, you have to deliver. I think he's delivered. Mm. If he didn't deliver a league, then you could say okay, you never delivered a league. You, they paid big money for you. He's someone that who can handle the pressure. He communicates really well. I don't know Portuguese. I mean, obviously, I know Spanish, so I can understand some of the words that he says. But he's a very good communicator. And the one thing that even Benfica fans and Porto fans that I've talked to, they all say they admire him because of the way he handles himself in press conferences. And he speaks very eloquently. So I think he would be he would have been really good for Chelsea because he, he understands, right, I just got to get these guys in a good formation, in a good tactics, and just stick to it. He doesn't change. 3-4-3, three, three, that's his name. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Amorim and 343 are together. So he's not going to change or change because of the personnel. Sticks to his guns and dies by it. Either it might work out or might not. That's why I thought he would have been good for Chelsea. And for Liverpool, obviously, everyone, I think, well, other than Tom, probably, everybody would have been Xabi Alonso. That would have been the first guy. For me, the second one would have been Amorim. I think he would have been the second one. I'm being realistic. Like, if I'm in a utopia i would have gone for diego simeone or simone and zaghi those would have been my guys but amorim would have been my yeah i would have really liked him but yeah look amorim good choice can handle the pressure plays good attractive football my only issue is it's really good you do it in the portuguese league really really nice you know okay <laughs> we see you you're doing your thing there this is the this is the premier league this is the, yeah. this is the league that all the british people tell me as a foreigner, this is the best league in the world. Oh, my God, best league. You're going to go to Wolves one week. You're going to Burnley the next week. You can't handle that. Uh, well, Amorim, let's see if you can handle it because Andres Villas-Boas, that boat sank immediately. I mean, I think he, he lasted, good, what, He four? was seen as good. Yeah, yeah he, he was seen as the next Mourinho. I think he lasted, what, four or five months and he was gone? So yeah. that's my only issue is, yes, you can, do, you can look excellent in Portugal. But it's a different thing doing it in the Premier League. That's that's my only sort of criticism for him. But when it comes to the style of football, I think it works out. And if you look at his European record, like if anybody has expectation for Sporting winning the Europa League, you're 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 on cuckoo land. You're smoking Snoop Dogg. That's what you're smoking. That fact that he beat Arteta heads up. I mean, that's a good sign, at least, isn't it? Get to yeah, round of sixteen against Man City in the Champions League. That's a good sign. So there's a lot of. We're going to get more into weaknesses, but initially when you look at the manager, you're thinking to yourself, winner. And that's what Liverpool need. They need a winner. As much as I rate De Zerbi in the football he plays, you look at the track record. Yeah. It ain't good. It, 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 yeah. There's no trophies. So I want somebody who's tasted the, the silverware. He's got that taste. I don't want somebody who's not put any salt or pepper on it. I need a little bit of paprika on it. And that's what Amorim is. He's, he's the paprika, and he can add it to this Liverpool team. And now, obviously, we'll get to more of the tactics and how, how we can, uh, with the personal we got, how we can do well. Well, yeah, I think it is a good choice overall if we do, if, if he does join. It, uh, uh, no, 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 there's no if. I just spent five hours watching videos. Like, he's definitely <laughs> joining. Hey, you, no... you, you educate yourself. It's okay. No, no, no uh, listen. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mike, he's joining. There, there is no two ways about it. If, if we get someone... At this point, I don't even want deserve enough. Like I've spent enough time now on Amarim to learn and understand like his little bits and bobs. But ends, I'll come. I'll come to you next with your with yourself because I know you know you you want a Jabby Alonso. Like if we were, if we could have gotten a manager, you wanted yeah. to get your know, Jabby Alonso, and that's totally understandable because ninety eight percent of the fan base also wanted Jabby Alonso to come in. Now that it's looking like that, we're getting someone like Amarim from everything that you do know, and I know you know more than I'm probably saying out loud here. With someone like him coming in, what are the kind of things that you're looking for from him coming in? And are you also like Tom and Michael thinking, no, nah, this is actually a, a good little, um, a good manager to, to bring in for Liverpool next season? Yeah, do you know what? With, um, with Alonso, it was the fit. It just, it felt like the right fit for Liverpool Football Club at the time. And I'm look, I was looking at a manager that was, you know, switching in-game tactics where I'm looking at currently or, you know, over the years of Klopp being here, we just sit up in a 4-3-3. Maybe sometimes we might go with a 4-4-2 depending if we're playing City just to be a bit more defensive. 
But other than that, it just felt like we were getting a bit boring and everyone knew how to play against us. And it just got stagnant. But I looked at Javi and I'm like, hmm, okay. Didn't do so well your previous club. Comes into to Leverkusen. Weren't the great first season. Second, now you, 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 you know, you're beating all the so-called best teams in Germany and you're doing it comfortably as well. And when if there's something you need to change, you're changing it within the game, not waiting until halftime. You're actually just making that change there and the adjustments done and dusted. But then, obviously, he's not the one that's coming. So, obviously, listening to Tom, listening to, obviously, Michael as one, well, and just doing my own research and looking online, mm. the only the, the only reason why I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy and I'm, I'm cool with it and I'm, it's fine, he just looks like a manager that isn't just going to... Even though the formation is 3-4-3, is three, three, it feels like there's going to be different variations with that. It doesn't feel like that's just the way we're going to set up in every game and... So by game week 10, everyone's like, well, we know how they're going to play. Let's just set up our tactics to to kind of counter what they're going to do. He just looks like a manager that's going to, if it's not working in the first 10 minutes, he's going to adjust. And if it, that doesn't work in that 10 minutes, he's going to adjust again. And that's what I've wanted to see from our football club and from a manager that, that you know, that's managing us. Because when, when I'm watching us now or just watching us over the years of supporting Liverpool, it just, oh, especially when Klopp's been here, I already know how we're going to set up and how we're going to play. And I'm like, if I know with less research and less, you know, you, you'd say like technology, these other clubs must be like, well, yeah, we know Salah is going to be here. We know they're going to go with Mane there when he was here. We know Bobby's going to drop in. We just have to find a way to stop it. So we'll just go with a low block. Where with a new manager that's going to set up tactically different. And it looks like some say his line is a bit deeper. Some say his line's a bit higher in terms of from a defensive standpoint. I would ju I've just have to wait and see. Maybe Michael or Tom can shed a bit of light on it for me. But I'm just like, okay, we when I've seen Liverpool at their com like their complete best is when sometimes when we give up possession to allow teams a bit more freedom to come and express themselves, and that's when we kill them on transition. Whenever we are the one with like ninety percent of the possession, we're spending because we don't have I don't know our final third gameplay hasn't been so great. It, we just struggle to break these teams down. And whenever we play against teams where we're like, no, no, have the ball, and we'd sit in and we just wait for that right moment to pick you apart, that's when you see us play the best football. And that's when you see, you know, we score some really, really good goals when teams just go, no, no, we ain't going to go low block today. We're going to play you guys. Um, so hopefully that's what he's going to be able to bring to the club. Um, and obviously when we get into the tactics, I can't wait for that breakdown. And, and obviously when we get into what players are going to probably survive in terms of the system or the shape and the setup. That's going to be another interesting conversation to hear what you guys think, because I know what I think. I can't yeah. wait to hear what you guys think. But I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it, man. I'm cool with it. I, I'm, I'm very excited just to see what happens after the end of the season. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited up to the end of the season, you know, final clock rain and, and, and whatever, and seeing if we can grab two more trophies. But come the end of the season, when we've played all of our games, my main focus now is to what are we going to be like in preseason? What is the setup? What new tactical things are we going to bring in? What's the new coaches? So I can go and, you know, learn who, what coaches is, is he going to bring in from a standpoint? Are we going to bring in a set piece coach? Are we? Gonna, I, I'm, I'm more interested in that stuff because that's the stuff that excites me about the game because then I know we're just going to be a difficult team to play against. Just have to wait and see, man. Now nah, you kind of summed that up kind of perfectly there because I didn't even, I did, but I didn't. I, I forgot about, oh yeah, he's still got to bring in his own coaches. So yeah. I forgot about all of that. I'm like, I'm so focused on him and what he's bringing. We, I don't know if he, like, again, someone I haven't even seen anything about that, but I don't know, has he got his own set piece coaches that he specifically wants to bring? Has he got all of these other extra people that he's looking to bring in to give him that? And, and you know what's so mad? It only gives you an extra bit of an advantage, but an extra bit of an advantage in the Premier League. We know how big that and how far that can go. We know that Liverpool, uh, we got the throwing coach, and you started to see from throw-ins, uh, especially that period of time when from throw-ins, Liverpool just looked dangerous every time we got a throw-in. It just dangerous, dangerous, dangerous. Like attack, attack, attack. So these these little margins, man. These little margins. Big up honesty and big up everybody who is inside. Again, please make sure you're smashing the like. I'm gonna throw this to Michael just because of what you said at the end of your. Um, end of your speech there. Question, why is it when it comes to players from sporting, we all rate them 
Diamondi, Inacio, Palina, um, Mateus Nunes, all played under him. So why with Almerim is the Porch is the Portuguese league like? Why is it that we now look at the Portuguese league like? Oh, it's the Portuguese league, but we rate the players that are there. People yeah, exactly. I mean, didn't didn't Bernardo Silva and Ruben Diaz come from that league? Didn't Angel yeah, yeah, Di Maria yeah. come from that league? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, yeah. now we're not going to rate it. What do those guys do? Well, look what Di Maria did for Real Madrid. Look what Ruben Diaz and all these guys have done for Man City. E so, even yeah, if you want to go well, further back than that, James Rodriguez, Falcao. Yeah, Fal Falcao, yep. Yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, so <laughs> Ronaldo. <laughs> Ruben, uh, like just recently, like Ruben Neves came from directly from the mm. Portuguese league and was one of the best midfielders in the Premier, in, like mid table Premier League for years. The Portuguese league doesn't produce bad players. It's not like the Dutch league where there's a lot of variety in terms of hits and misses. I feel the Dutch league is a lot more volatile in transitioning to the Premier League. I feel that the Portuguese league translates pretty well. It's just sometimes it takes the quality a little bit of time to catch up. Mm. Even if you look at us, I wouldn't say Nunes and Diaz have been resounding successes, but they've not been flops. They've not mm. been bad. They've just... There's certain things in the game, but they, they play important parts in the team. They're in the Egan Klopp starting 11 for a reason. So it's clearly not a bad league. I, I don't know why I get so much discredit. And I, I, like you said, we're rating all these players. People want Inacio, people want Diamande. Surely you'd want the manager who's made them into the players that they are. Yeah. Not only because it, he must be a decent manager then, but also might give you the edge in trying to sign these players. Yeah. And then he doesn't have to worry about, oh, well, this guy we've got right not fit, so now we've got to go try and find someone else. If he just goes, I played the system, I want them to because they know how to play it. Sorted. No, nah, it's just the thing is. Didn't we true. just hire the Benfica guy for some uh role in the club? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't I don't know, a long time. Like, but... What what is it? What is he like? What does he do? Like what he's do? like so. Imagine like Edwards is the CEO of yeah. football at FSG. I assume this Portuguese fella is one of his advisors or like his assistants in that role. Okay. Okay. So it, it's not going to be just Liverpool that they're working on. My mm -hmm. hunch is that we're going to go buy a Portuguese club. And just use that one as for, for as like a feeder club, but he's also even though it's not necessarily just Liverpool he's going to be working on, he's going to have a say on Liverpool the same way Edwards is, which is why the moment I heard Edwards was coming back, but even before Alonso had said no, I was like, what just go for Amarim because the data pushes Amarim more than Alonso. <laughs> it's it's mad, man. It's mad. Uh, and what do you think, man? Like, why do you think? People and it might just be as simple as me just saying it's just an agenda. But why do you think it's like that? Where we seem to always and it's Premier League fans. Let's not lie to ourselves. It's the ones that we know. Me and you, we speak about this all the time. When the fact that people don't watch football outside of the Premier League, Mike, I've spoken to you about this a hundred times. With the fact that people don't watch football outside of the Premier League, the Premier League then becomes this holy grail. So all of a sudden now, if you ain't from the Premier League or you don't bang in the Premier League, then it's like, yeah, that's it. You you can't be, you know, you can't be good. You can't be seen as anything good kind of thing. I mean, I would I would advise people to see whether the previous Ballon d'Ors who are not Messi or Ronaldo, where have they come from? Not many have come from the Premier League anyway, <laughs> outside of obviously the Messi-Ronaldo era. They they rarely come from here. If, the, if, if at all, I can't remember Ronaldo being the last one in the Premier League before that. Michael Owen. So we're going back to what yep. Owen. And and I'm again I'm taking out the Messi and Ronaldo era. Who who else is there? Like and this is what I'm saying. So it's not like we're sitting here saying that we have the best of the best. But as fans, we do. Why do you think that is? Like why do you think we have this facade, so to speak? I think you summed it up perfectly, man. I feel like people don't watch football outside of, outside the UK a lot. Only if there's a big game, if the El Clasico is on. Maybe the Milan derbies on, you know, maybe, I don't know, PSG, you know, Marseille's. Or, people then tune into those type of games, but they won't just go, I'm going to sit down and actually go and look at what players and, and what style of football is being played in all these different leagues. Like I always say to you, when we have conversation, football's just on in the background. If I'm not doing something, just throw on a game and it just be there. So then I, not only I can learn what's going on in the other countries and, and the style of football and what new players and, and managers are coming out, but it's it's just good to watch other you know other leagues as well, man. The, the, the football is 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 great. The only reason why I think it gets a lot of knock sometimes is because sometimes only one team is always winning that league. And I'm not saying that's just to do with the Portuguese league, but I'm just saying in general. And then, but then the question you ask: Has the Premier League not been this bad? Because 
Man mm-hmm. City's been the one that's, you know, cleaning up. And if they win it again this year, that's four in a row they've done. And what's to say they can't next season then go and do it again if they improve their team? If we're saying they're not as good this year, they go and improve next year and say they win it this year as well. That could be five in a row. I just feel like people just need to watch mad. more games outside and don't just look at the big games. Go and watch the smaller teams as well and see what's going on. But the problem is, it used to be a lot easier because you 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 know you could get Spanish football used to be on Sky Sports, Italian football used to be on you know Channel Five, Channel Four. So you you was able to catch these type of games on you know all different types of channels. But now, because the rights have been sold to different companies, and, and, and you know it's harder now to kind of catch or watch a lot more of the other teams play in their in their leagues. But if you're a football fan, you, you so called football fan, or you, you know you. you, you Whatever it is, you, you know, you love the sport. If you really care, you go and find a way to watch the other games and see that not every league is 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 dead. And the Portuguese player that come out of the Portuguese league, you're, you're, I think you guys are right on that one because most of them tend to hit the ground running and actually do well well in the Premier League. Obviously, there's some that hasn't, but the majority have. Look um, at Bruno Fernandes when he first joined United. Where he yeah, awesome. goals and assists. But I feel like with, with football fans now and just just my opinion obviously I feel like if players are not scoring or assisting no one cares so if you're not scoring or assisting no one cares about your actual performance in a game of football so where I, I take it obviously you guys I know Michael definitely obviously Tom speaking to you and, and obviously G I know you guys watch it but just in general no one spends the time to watch other teams play football and just look at performances and don't judge them purely just on their goals or an assist and that's why we say now in this modern generation, Zidane is, pro- is rubbish and Ronaldinho is rubbish because they didn't never have been able to watch them. And then they'll go, let me go and look at his goals and assists. Oh, he didn't score a lot of goals. That means he's not that good. No, 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 no. no. You need to have watched them play. But yeah, man. Nah, <laughs> nah listen, man. I actually, like, I, I fully agree. And I think that is always going to be a problem with, you know, today's today's kind of generation, if I'm being totally honest with you. but. Listen, man, this is why we always got to do, like, people like myself, you, Michael, Tom, this is why we have to do these streams every now and again, because otherwise, because remember, we're the ones pushing out the narratives at times. So if we're not pushing out something of some type of sense, you will have Blink 101 in the comment section telling us about, you know, this, that, and the third. And it's like, well, no, like, just, just watch the game. That's it. Just watch the game. And if you watch the game, you will see that such and such is actually playing really, really well. And that it's not the fact that because they haven't scored or they haven't assisted that we must put them down in any way, such form. It's just that they are playing well without scoring. Hence why, I'll just quickly say it, hence why we talk about Salah so much. Because the performances have been stinky as hell, but he's getting the GA. So, of course, people are only seeing it from one aspect. And I'm like, watch the performances and you'll see. But guys, you can um hopefully you guys can see this on the screen absolutely fine. Um, this is sporting's formation system. I'm gonna call it the three four two one, but I'm sure obviously as we get into it, you know, the, the, the guys will probably be able to tell me better anyway, just in terms of how it changes and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. But just looking on the face of that, when you look at that team, and this is just a team from um, I think it was just like one game, and I think they just picked out players so they might not be the main stars within that in this system who are the what are the key positions let me not say who what are the key positions in this system because every system has a position or two where you're like yeah he needs this type of guy and this and that um i think that probably the wide center backs are important because of the positions that they'll be put in as a result of the wing backs, the wing backs end up being the wide players in the attacking shape of the either the three two five or the two three five. Mm-hmm. So the wide centre backs end up having to do a lot of covering on the occasions where Sport and I hit on the counter attack. So they do need to be very pacey, which both Inacio and Diamande are. Mm-hmm. Uh, the wing backs have to be very good on the attack, but they are ma- mainly they need a good engine because not only do they have to get right up there on the attack on defence, the they cannot wait there to get right back and form a flat back five. Um, the right DM this season especially has become more important. In the past, that used to be Palinha and Ugarte. But this season with Hajulman, he's actually got someone who can really play me from the deep. So he's now put a little bit more emphasis on getting him the ball in positions. But that's normally the 
destroyer of the midfield too. And Marita is the more box-to-box roamer of the two, can occasionally crash the box late to be a sixth man in the attack. Um, normally, instead of Paulinho on the left, it's uh, um, Pedro Gonçalves, who, when he plays, does form this dead narrow, as you can see, narrow front three with two tens with him and Trincao. When it's Paulinho, I read it as typically a Trincao ends up moving very centrally and Jokeres and Paulinho form a two-man strike force. Because they're both tall. Paulinho's typically a striker. He was the striker until Jokerez arrived. Um, but if, if the, the key components are quick wide centre backs and pro- a, a big man up top who can link the play. Jokerez and Paulinho, they both they're, they're both six foot two plus. Um, both very strong. Both very good at holding up the play and bringing others in. But the difference between Paulinho and Jokerez is Jokerez is also a bit of an in-behind threat, which he never really had before, and he's been using a lot this year with often Quatters, who moves, you remember him, uh, moves into the midfield now and will, will occasionally, when it's not Hujulman, play these long raking balls in the channels and behind for Jokerez to chase, and you'll see just a swarm of sporting players push through and, um, and crash that box because Amarim's system is built on getting as many players forward. If teams want to defend with four, he'll have five. If teams want to defend with five, he'll have six. He just wants to make sure he's always got an overload in the attack. And then on defence, obviously, because he's trying to get all these overloads, they can be caught out occasionally. But when they're not, especially when you know teams are trying to build out from the back, so against Hampton News, Brighton, for an example, who'd like to take their time playing slowly out the back, they'll form this flat back five with a, with a midfield four, and then just Jokic as, as the lone outlet up top, and it's a very stable and rigid defensive setup that is the reason why they. I think I'm sure someone could get me wrong, but I think they are the second best defensive team behind Arsenal this season on XG against. XG against, yes. I thought you're going to be like in general, but your XG against, yes. The goalkeeper is. I'm going to just, their goalkeepers have been shit this season. Adan's been injured for most of the year and 36, so he's not very good. And the backup goal, Franco Israel, every single game I'm watching him, he's making a howler. Sometimes it leads to a goal, sometimes it doesn't. But every single game, without mistake, you'll watch Franco Israel make a howler of an error. So I think if you have a 17, or it was before the Benfica game, a 17.84 XG against, and have conceded 27. The teams are very defensively solid, and then his goalkeeper lets him down. You take out Adan or an Israel, and you put in an Allison, who is a freak by all metrics of XG. You're seeing numbers that that are more accurate. So you won't. I don't think it'll be 17, but it'll be like 20 in yeah. the Premier League, and that's very good defensive numbers, especially if he's able to get in the plays that he wants in that defense. So I I think this is a very interesting system. People just look at the back thing and go, oh, no, it's defensive, it's this, it's that. This attacks very well. It's a very attacking system when it needs to be. I think people need to stop looking at football in just a lens of formation. This is a shape. Very rarely does a team set up exactly like this in shape. Mm. If you were to look at it from kickoff, that's so goal kicks and kickoff, that's when it'll look like this. Yeah. Any other time, it is in a different variation of it. That's the really interesting thing. And like um, was said earlier by Enns, Amarin will tactically adapt. I remember the um, Cup semi-final against um, Benfica. First half, they were getting killed out wide. So he took off his two attacking wing-backs and brought on two defensive ones mm. and basically just stifled any width, forced to play through the middle and used Jokerez exclusively as a hold-up man. And they played around that. Scored two minutes after the restart and scored the second one. And then all of a sudden they got, they went through. And he's very good at them tactical switches. Even in the game on Saturday, his tactical switches changed the momentum and won them the game. He's a very smart tactical manager. So I, I have no doubt that he'd work out the how to adapt in game, which, w- which would be a nice change of pace from what we've expected from Klopp throughout his He's gotten best at it this year. I'm just yeah, he, he, I, I, I even year. admit that he's gotten better. He but, it has always been the big thing with him that there's always just been he could change, but he sticks. Klopp's Klopp from for the most part, Liverpool's been plan A but harder when plan A doesn't work. Amarim is a plan B and a plan C and a plan D kind of guy. <sighs> I definitely agree with that Klopp being plan A 
<laughs> but harder. Ends, um, and I'll quickly go over to uh, after you, uh, to Michael. When you look at this, obviously, you yeah. see this out here, and obviously, uh, Tom kind of just talking us through, you know, everything there in terms of the build up play, you know, defensively, this setup, and you know, the patterns of play, you know, so to speak. We can see here, we know Sebastian Quartes, of course, ex Liverpool player. I'm, I'm so surprised that he's even doing somewhat well over there because I thought his career would just go down a pan to be honest with you, once he left Liverpool. But, listen, maybe Amarim really is as good as everyone keeps telling oh, me. Oh, Kwasis is the captain. Kwasis is the main guy. Yeah, he's actually the line. main guy, bro. He's... This is what I'm saying, is that, like, I, I didn't think it was going to happen because when he came to Liverpool, if man remember a championship manager, he was a wonder kid. Like, he was a full wonder kid to, to try and sign. So when he came to Liverpool, I was gassed. I was like, this is one of the players that I've seen and I thought he was going to do well. Obviously, it just didn't really pan out. When you see here, he's moving, obviously, in that back three. They, um, he, he himself will move into that kind of defensive midfield position. Now, obviously, if we let, relate it back to Liverpool, I'm assuming, and I don't know if anyone here will disagree, I'm assuming yeah. we're saying that, and he, he, I'm not saying that Amram's going to play exactly, you know, down to a T, the exact same. But when we see things like this, the centre-back moving into that position to then form a three in front of that back four, are we then comfortable seeing Virgil van Dijk in that same position? Well, have you not noticed Virgil this... Well, in the, uh, the last three or four games, he, he's popping up everywhere now. He's not actually staying mm -hmm. at centre-back no more. He's running past... In the last two games, he's run past the set, he's run past the midfielders to go and press. And I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here. But in terms of like for like, I think he will... Quartes, I, I, I'm not too sure his long passing accuracy this season, but I think he's one of the best centre backs I'm um, in Europe at the moment in terms of long pass accuracy. And Virgil, we already know, has that in the locker with abundance. He can play it short and he can play it long. I think Virgil is that type of player. He's got the speed. He's got. He's strong. He's aggressive. He can just drop in there, take the ball, and the way that it looks like the opposition set up and pressing up against them. As soon as he turns there with that ball from the keeper, that's that's in behind already. You know, it, and, it often doesn't even go to Quasas from the keeper. It'll often go out to the left centre back or the right centre back. That would draw the pre so Quasas only really goes there to draw the to like stop the whoever's on that side from pressing properly. Exactly. If he goes to press, he's got an option there in the middle and he can turn out. It more often than not goes to one of the left or the right centre backs who waits for the press, sends it to the full back who knocks it inside to the centre mid, and then all of a sudden they're out past the initial and press and he can bomb on. And then watching it as well, sometimes like he and if they do get pressed, of what I love about him as well, he'll just go long. He'll just go long. And I'm like, we don't do that enough at Liverpool. Like we we can see that the press is on and we still wait and we wait and we wait and we wait. And I'm like, no, just hit it long. Nunes makes runs after runs after runs. And sometimes we're just nervous just to hit it in behind. You don't realise how many like, mistakes yeah. come from just hitting it long and teams start to panic then, especially when it's coming down from the air, especially if you've got a striker like a Nunes or a Jota closing you down. The potential of a defender to misread the, the flight or take a bad touch and all of a sudden you're in. All of a sudden you've got a three on two just because you've pre you've sent it long and you've forced a mistake. I just don't feel that we use that as much as we could do with the profiles <clears> that we've got. And Amrim is happy to. I think a number of Jokers' goals this season have come from a long ball that's sent up and either he wins the knockdown or he capitalises on the mistake and then they're just away. And the one thing I will say is Sporting are very incisive on their counter-attacks. It's so well drilled. that, that, that You know how we sit there on counter-attacks and make every single incorrect decision at the minute? Yeah. yeah. Sporting don't. Sporting just go bang, bang, goal. <laughs> Listen... I'm hoping he can also sort that part out. Um, Michael, uh, Tom, obviously just talking about um, uh, Jokerez there. How important yeah. is he, first of all, to their system? And how important do you think it's going to be for Amarim to get that position right? And third part of the question, do you think we have that profile here? Or is he going to potentially be looking for someone to almost do a similar role to what Jokerez is um, doing for sporting? No, I mean what what Victor Jerkeres has done this season, I I'm shocked. Okay. <laughs> I'm generally shocked. Like he was a good player commentary, but nobody expected what we're seeing now. Yeah. The man has now a hundred million release costs. That's yeah, yeah, these yeah. guys are the, they're the mafia, bro. They're actually the mafia, sporting Benfica and Porto. They're all the mafia. These guys know exactly. They see a good player 
but put him in the right system, right coaching, 100 million right there. Enzo Fernandez, Ruben Diaz, you name it, Joel Felix. As long as you have the right system and you just see, okay, he's got good qualities, but can we maximize it to the maximum potential? And that's Victor Yerkeres. Tom made a good point. I mean, the off-ball work rate that Yerkeres has is insane. Constantly just running, pressing, trying to find the channels. That's very similar to Darwin. But the thing is, Yerkeres, I think, has better hold-up play and is better with the link-up play than Darwin. Darwin will just keep on running and keep on running and give you the pressing. Yerkeres has that ability on the ball, though. Okay, he can take on a man and he can beat him. So he is so vital. Because without him last season, it was Paulinho. And if you ask any sporting fan, Paulinho was basically Morata. Constantly missing chances, okay. constantly being offside, and it's just god-awful. He's not a footballer. Now, this season, I don't know what's happened to him. I don't know if he's been eating some, I don't know what, cod. Some good cod from Portugal. That's exa- <laughs> that's what happened to Paulinho this season. Now, with this map that you see here, the thing is, and I think a, a goal that everybody should see from Yerkeres especially is the hold-up play and played it into Pedro Gonzalez against Atalanta. Yes. That's, that's yeah. sort of, that's exactly how Sporting wants to score almost every goal. Every goal is wants to go down the middle. They want to link up the play. They're kind of like, maybe you guys have seen tactical videos of uh, Denise from Fluminense. Yeah. Very yeah. quick passing, short, incisive ball, but mostly down the middle. That's Sporting as well. They don't, they don't really score a lot of goals out wide. The only time they really score out wide is... All right, we're going to play a long ball towards Yerkeres or Trincao down the wings, and they're just going to create some magic. Most of the time, when I see it at least, is, okay, we're going to build up the play down the middle. We got Morita then who's driving with the ball. That's why when I see Morita play, I'm like, that's McAllister. And then with McAllister's ability and quality on the ball, I mean, he's. I think if, if McAllister plays in this system, we're going to see even uh, even better Alexis. That's what, that's what I'm excited about. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So... Yeah, 100%. Now, the question is, is there a Yerkeres for Liverpool? <laughs> I'm I'm going to be honest, no. I don't think Darwin is that guy. As much as I love Darwin, I just don't think he has that quality on the ball like Yerkeres. He doesn't. He'll run down the channel. He'll do all the off-ball, the work rate. But does he have the quality to... Okay, can he link up play? I mean, what was the last time we saw a good link up play with from Darwin? Yes, to be, it's it's not consistent. Not to be fair, though, he has improved a lot this season. No, no. The first yeah, season he has time. improved, but do you believe he could play as a false nine sort of guy? Because that's what next he's going to have to do in this in this formation. Next season this and Ruben coming in, maybe. <laughs> I'll, I'll be honest. The, the striker <laughs> one, the closest to Yokerez we have is in terms Gakpo. of just player for player is Nunes. But the best fit for a Amarim striker might be a Gakpo or a Jossa. I think Jossa, if he could just stay fit for more than 10 games in a row, yes. would be the perfect Amarim striker. Because even though he's not six foot three, six foot four, he can body some big defenders. He can do that link-up plays we see in the season. It, I think all of them will get their opportunities. But if you go back to the one that you showed at the start, where you had Paulinho out on the left, that's mm. probably a spot I could see Nunes occupying because of what Paulinho is and what Nunes is. Nunes could be that emergency second striker type thing who he occasionally throws on or st- occasionally starts and brings on pretty much every game to for what he brings and for his threat and everything. Pre-season, I know what we've we've been doing every single pre-season. I know what to expect from us in pre-season. I'm actually very interested to watch us this pre-season because I want to see who is going to get the nod in certain roles if we don't buy that. Is, because who knows? You know the Liverpool board might just lose their mind and go, you know what, Victor, you were so good at sport in the damn room. Come over here, we'll pay the 100 million. <laughs> That's what you never know. Jesus Christ. You never know. Imagine. You oh my God. The fan base, the, the fan base would, would literally yeah, have a I can't lie, it. man. If we see a Swedish guy from play for Liverpool, I might die. <laughs> what we... and, 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 listen, especially with someone who's That's my nightmare. Gee, we could break it down 20 million over the five years, man. We're good, man. Oh no! You know, you're not you've not factored in whoever we sell, who you can then put as as like, oh well, we sold him they, for that, and then it's like, oh, we only spent go, two and a half million over five years, saving some money off the wage bill as well. It's okay. Let's put you this way. Let's. I, I, I'll ask you this. Let's say that we had the money to buy him. Would any of you here buy your careers for Liverpool next season? If I'm being honest, no. yes, hundred percent. You would buy him. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm kind of with ends. I don't think I would buy him. I don't. I don't feel like. 
as long as as long as I address the other positions first and I can still get them after that, then yes. We have to address some. And what do we one. got now? Top bully bank account or something? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying in an ideal world, like if you could buy, no, no, him, of course, of course, someone that you would genuinely, you know, what I mean, genuinely yeah, decide. Well, if you, genuinely, when, saying, I, yeah. when I've seen him play this season, especially because I didn't watch a lot of Coventry, um, I don't really watch the championship. What I've yeah. seen for him and Sweden, I'm like, no, this guy is improving and improving, and he already knows Amorim. He wanted to join Amorim. I think it's a match made in heaven. Sometimes, you know, what, what was that that Croatian player that was always with uh, Harry Redknapp? God damn, Nico Cranchar. Cranchar. Yeah. Nico Cranchar. Cranchar. Yeah. You know what? Let's just let's just make Yerkes our, our Cranchar. You're just coming with him, bro. You're you're a package. You're a package deal. You're the meal deal at at, at McDonald's. So would you play Darwin yes, off of him then? That's in that probably three. where and you I I wouldn't I wouldn't play Darwin. So if 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 Nunes was to play, if Jokic was coming and Nunes was to play, that would be how it would pl- how it would be set up. Yes, it would be. Yeah, Darwin would be the Nunes off the left. Yeah, Jokic up top and Salah or Elliot or whoever it is on the well, race. That's what I was even going to ask you guys. Obviously, I was just I was looking at this again because every time you keep mentioning players, I then go back to this just quickly. Look, okay, he's he's saying this guy on that side, this guy on that side, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's say we we go based just on this graphic that we've got here, right? Mm-hmm. Forget Nunes for a second. Where do you see Luis Diaz? I had PSG. this conversation earlier on, and I was talking about he might potentially go PSG, blah blah blah. That's... Where do you, where <laughs> he's do you in Paris? Him? He's in Paris. Okay. <laughs> to be fair, G, the the Katamo guy, he's not really a right wing back. He's not no, naturally. He's a, he, he, neither he's was a right winger. Santos. Ne- neither yeah, was neither was Santos. Santos. So he's kind of converted them into wing backs, but basically they're wingers. They just yeah. defend a lot off the ball, so mm-hmm. I could kind of see maybe Diaz in that position. I mean, okay. look at the amount of work rate Diaz does now. And then, yeah. see, that's why I want Diaz. I don't want Diaz in the sort of Paulinho, Pedro Gonzalez. I don't want him in those little pockets of space trying to receive the ball. I want Diaz to get the ball out wide and take on a man. And in this mm-hmm. formation and these tactics, he would do that exactly. But does he, he have the defensive work rate? No. Now. Do you want to know a player that would be perfect for this formation and tactics? Go on. I know it. Exactly. Exactly. He's the, the, he, the, he is the, the guy. Two Either him the... or, or Theo Hernandez. It would be one of those two, but Theo Hernandez would be way too Theo much. Theo Hernandez, yeah. I, don't, yeah. I think he'll yeah. cost. He, he would be my two players who are, I think we're pretty much certain to sign in the summer, and that's Ait Nori and Inacio. I don't see us finding another left-footed centre-back who we'd like, because we've wanted Inacio for a couple of years now. And as, as we said, if he doesn't want to do Luis Diaz at left wing back, which God, could you imagine the reaction on the likes of Twitter if we saw Luis Diaz lining up at left wing back one game? Um, if he doesn't want to do that, Ait Nori would, would be your best option for that spot. I, I personally do see Diaz. If he was to stay, he'd be in that Nuno Santos role. Yeah. But otherwise, it would be very much enjoy Paris Mace, go play with Colin Moani and Gonzalo Ramos. <laughs> First of all, you lot are rude. But you people in the comments, you're also rude because I'm seeing, yeah, he'll be at PSG, he'll be in Spain. Y'all are rude. Hey, but... I, hey don't bring me into this, G. I didn't say nada. <laughs> hey, G, no, I, G I, I, I love the player. 75 mil, 75 mil. If they want to give me 75 mil, I, how much should we mind. sign him for? 37. Third. Okay, so you're oh. saying basically double up. Did we not? Wait, was there, it there, might there, for that, there might yeah, be add ons. There might be add ons in there that I've forgotten. I think all the add-ons add up to 50, but he hasn't triggered them yeah. all. So, uh, okay. If he hasn't triggered them all, then... Okay. To about 42 and a half, I reckon we paid. But it's still what pretty about, much doubling your money. What about, just before I go into this graphic, what about Ngappe? Oh, yeah, Michael, what do, you, what do you think about Ngappe instead? I like I like, I like Ngappe. I like, I like him, but Man 70 aggressive. million for him, I would not do it. I, I would not do it. Yeah, I don't, it I don't think like he's card, really... Yeah. Yeah, he's not. He's not. He's very good on the ball, but defensively, he's sort of weak. And seventy million, give me a defender. I don't want somebody. Oh, you can spray a pass fifty yards. Defend. That's the number one thing. If you're a center back, defend. I would not go for Hinkapie. I mean, if we want to go sort of budget and really Michael Edwards style, I would go for another Ecuadorian actually, and that's William Pacho from Eintracht Frankfurt, because he would probably cost twenty twenty five million. And he's left-footed as well. And he's an absolute beast. And I think he's better than Hinkapie. I mean, Bastoni, of course, would be wonderful. But oh, we're Bastoni's not getting him. Dream. Bastoni That's is a dream, dream, but we're not getting him. For 
you, you're just not getting it. I mean, Cal, Cal, Calafiori is good, but I feel like he's the I, like ones. I, I think he might go Juventus or something. I, I, need I, I, I don't think it, really I, I don't think Italians to the Premier League traditionally translate well. I mean, I I I, I like Inacio. I know people have been watching sport and recently has had the best of games, but for the three years that he's been in that that sport and first team, he's been a regular. He's been very good in big games for them. So I have no issue with us getting Inacio. Um, I also quite like the um, Nottingham Forest lad. What's his name? Murillo. Yes, I, I, I wouldn't trust him to start for us. I wouldn't trust him to start for That's us. But it's like it, if they went down, if they went down and like oh 25, 30 mil, I'd do him as a backup. I think there's lots of work with this. I think especially purely because of how I think you mentioned this, Tom. I, I was listening to you and Sam stream the other day, and you said it um, towards the end of the stream about. Liverpool always signing players who go down, like signing one player who goes down, who gets relegated. And I think you did mention actually Murillo, to be fair. Um, I think Sam was saying, don't pick Gibbs White. And you're like, no, 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 not him. You were talking about Murillo. And I mean, he's all right. I mean, I agree with Enzi. He does look like a bodybuilder, to be fair. But he is also a decent, a somewhat decent player. Hey, he's when we're looking. Up Palo, <laughs> Say that again. Nah, he's cold. Palo will be playing. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like every conversation that me and you have sorry, had recently, my bad. My you bad. always yeah. mention Salah. Like sorry, I, we man. weren't even on Salah sorry, at this man. point in time, but you mentioned Salah. Sorry, anyway, man. I was just about to come to you, regardless, because you um, uh, we're talking about what well, we were talking about, uh, Alexis McAllister. Now I'm mm. assuming all of all four of us here would say this system, great. He come, he's in there, no problem whatsoever. First and foremost, whereabouts in this system? And secondly, how do you think his skill set is going to work? I'll go to you, Enns, first. Isn't it? Oh, McAllister, man. Um, I don't know what this guy can't do, man. Mm. When he was in the six, I never, I didn't have a problem as much as most of the fan base at the time. I, I just felt like, yes. yeah, I just felt like obviously his skill sets weren't utilized. And I, I get it, man. We, we didn't have a six at the time. Then we got in Wataru, then he needs time to embed into the Premier League. Yeah. Um, so McAllister still had to kind of play there. Um, and then since he's moved further forward, uh, it's it, in that forward eight, man. It's just it's just great. And I feel like for this system, because you know their their double pivot, I'll, I'll call it that. McAllister will have the freedom to roam into different areas. Um, I don't know how rigid um, Ruben is in terms of how we will keep his attack that you know his double pivots together. But what I've noticed is that the 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 one that has got the freedom, I think McAllister would cause a lot of problems. Because it would end up, it would be the one that kind of controls, dictate the tempo of the game, keep it simple, the little intricate one twos. Um, and whoever you're playing with, I don't know who in the Liverpool team you guys will think will be his partner in there, because it could be Sobo, it could be Wataru, there's Gravenberg, there's Curtis, there's so many different players that could play in there. I don't know if they can, they could. Um, it would be an interesting one when you see McAllister just calm the game. In terms of how we used to see Raquel may play for for Villarreal back in the day, where he was able to control and calm the game down himself. So, I'd, to be honest, yeah, in the double pivot, but I don't know. He could play in one of the forward roles as well, in my opinion. He could probably play left side or the right side. Mm. I, I think I, he's that talented. Yeah, I, I think the big change I might see with Amarim at Liverpool in terms of the system, it'll be the same shape, but I think you might see him sort of sacrifice a natural destroyer for two general quality midfielders. And just basically tell them, especially if they're both like McAllister levels are smart. When one goes forward, one of you stays back, but you just can rotate who goes forward when. If he goes forward, you stay back. If he goes forward, you stay back. And you can just figure it out that way. That's why when I've been saying my things and people have been asking who do I think would work in that midfield alongside him, if he sticks with how it is, don't be surprised to see Bajsetic get a lot of minutes because mm -hmm. that's who we'd love to mould into that spot. But mm. I have a sneaking suspicion that you might see Trent and McAllister as a pivot with each other. Michael, I saw your face. Push up, push up. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Nah, I'm not, no, 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 no. As soon as he mentioned, so, we, Mc, um, so we're gonna we're correct. gonna convert we're gonna convert to a five in the back formation, and we're now we're gonna put Trent in the midfield. Whereas with this formation, this would exactly be to his T of his qualities. I, I agree. I agree that. In an ideal world where he wants to listen, he goes right wing back and he's putting in crosses. But yeah, exactly. that man wants to, that man probably wants to play centre at this point. 
So if he wants nah. to play centre mid, he goes right DM. And him and McAllister. So, we, so Tom, you don't think we're seeing obviously this is on the left hand side, but we can see how the um centre back in the middle's got the ball. His options are basically in this move, he plays it over the top, by the way. But he's got options yeah. to play out left. If he plays mm -hmm. it out to the left side of centre back, he can then go into the central midfielder there. And then of course they can play from there. In this move, though, he does just go over the top. So you're not you're saying that let's say this is on the right hand side, that's not Trent. I don't think the right. I don't think the wing backs will be Trent. I, as much as I think Trent's got the technical ability to be a wing back, mm -hmm. I don't know if he has the physical requirements to be an Amarin wing back and the defensive levels to be an Amarin wing back. Yet he could get away with it in the midfield because he'd have McAllister alongside him and a flat back five behind him to mask mistakes. At right back, if he's caught out of position. Whoever's right centre back, which will probably be That's Canate, right. is doing so much running, it will kill him. <laughs> not like he's not used to it, to be fair. So I mean, I oh, uh, we, he it's does amazing. a lot now. I imagine that probably just under twice as much mm. because of how wide they have to start anyway. Which is why I think you know I, I, I was going to do a, a, a little thing on my own channel about the youngsters that Amarin would look at. Bradley is someone who will get a lot of game time under him. Because Bradley's an archetypal Amarin wing back, will go up and down, up and down, up and down. Can put a cross in when he's needed, but he's defensively pretty sound. That's the type of wing back that Amarin will go for. Trent could be put out there in a needs must situation. Yeah. But he's, typically, he don't be shocked if one of the wing backs is a centre back, naturally. Matthias no, Reese, who is someone oh, okay. who is routinely used by Amarin, both at wing back and centre back is naturally a centre-back, but at points he will just go, right, Mateus, I need you out wide. We we'll, we'll might not go through as much attacking-wise, but you can sit back. I know I know, I can trust you defensively, which is why Joe Gomez and Bradley mm. is what I think right-wing-back depth could be, which is why I've not put mm. Amarim as a start, or uh, Gomez as a starter in any Amarim thing, because his versatility to play centre-back and right-back is what Amarim would be after as a backup option, as a, as a rotation option. Trent, for me, would just go in that middle alongside McAllister with Bysetic and Jones getting the minutes and the less said about Ryan Gravenbeck, just fit the better. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know what's so crazy? I was just about to come to ends as well. That's actually very coincidental that you just mentioned Gravenbeck. But I was going to ask, because I know ends you've been championing this, you know, putting Trent in midfield thing. Um, I'm kind of with Michael. I'll be, I'll be honest. I am with Mike in terms of I would have thought, looking at this and seeing the way that they do play and the way that they set up and the way that they build from the back especially, I would have thought this would be perfect for him to not even have to always be... In the Liverpool team now, he's the one that we pass the ball to. He will basically start the moves. He starts the whole build-up play, blah, blah, blah. Now I feel like he doesn't have doesn't need to have that own... I know he can do it because we've seen him spray passes, Hollywood passes all day long. The fact that we can get him further up the pitch, closer to goal, playing in those same balls that he's been playing for the last five, six, seven years, I would have thought that that would be better. But I know, Enz, you like your, you'd like you prefer to see him in the midfield. So you're, are you thinking you'd prefer to see him alongside a McAllister, potentially? Um, yeah, potentially. The only reason why, bro, because uh, before we needed him to be the right back. It was Trent. There was no one else there. And we always argue the case, we don't have backup. We don't have backup. Yeah. With the resurgence of, you know, Joe Gomez this season, centre-back and right-back, as, as Tom was putting it, and then you've got Bradley as well. That's already two players that can play in that position. <clears throat> Why not utilise Trent's skill sets elsewhere? If if I was him, I would. Because If it was just Trent, then I'd be like, no, listen, Trent, play wing-back. That's the role. That's what you're going to have to do um, you're one of the best at crossing the ball in your, you know, your passing range and whatever, play there. But because we've got a Gomez and because we've got a Bradley, I don't see why we need a third man to be there, if that makes sense. Where we can use Trent's passing abilities, calmness to control games as well. And we know Trent himself wants to go and play there. So what do you want? A player that's happy in a position... And you know, do his best and probably evolve and get better at playing it. Or do you want a player going, here we go again? I'm gonna have to play as a right back or wing back, whatever way you want to put it. And then you don't get the best out of him. And I, 
And I'm saying, yeah, you're a grown man, fix up. You know, if the manager tells you this is where you're going to play, this is where you have to play. At yeah. the same time, he's human, bro, and he wants to play in a different position. So I can probably see maybe in preseason, maybe Ruben gives him the uh, maybe the audition, go play there. Let's see how you can do in the, in the double pivot. Let's see if you can play in one of the front three in terms of the right or the left side. Let's see what you can do if that's not the position you want to play. Because I've got Gomez and because I've got Bradley that can play as the wing backs, if needs be. And then if Trent's on the pitch and you need to take one of them off, maybe Gomez has to go and play centre-back in one of the three. You can then easily move Gomez if he, if he's the one that's right wing back, put him out in the back three and then Trent can then go there and then you can put on a midfielder. So you, you get the best of both worlds in that moment as well. Tactically, you can change it and, it's, and it will be seamless as well. Yeah, I just think for the betterment of, of our team and for him, because Ch- I think getting Trent in a position where he can create more, I, f- I think it only helps us. I I no longer want to see a team, our team, with the shackles on. I don't want to see players only being able to use 50, maybe 55% of their actual powers that they can give and execute. Yeah. And that's why I want to see what Ruben can do, because I feel like he's he may be the guy to unlock all of these guys and maybe use, I'm not saying they'll use all of it, but a Trent playing and enjoying himself is a Trent we know that can get three, four assists in the game easily. Ultimately, I, I just go back to what Michael said and I agreed with a lot of sporting's build that play goes through the middle. They want to attack through the middle. If we're putting Trent as a right wing back, any time the left centre back starts build up, we're doing an attack without him. Pretty much. There's very few moments in that attack where he'll end up getting on the ball and trying to create at some point, mm. which to me is just a case of I need to have him in the middle. And his his range of passion and his creativity from deep is something that is so vital to this team. Hence why he does it for us now. Mm. He plays as that right DM now. When we have build up, this would just be him doing that full time, which would probably be better for us. And like I said, I believe it would be a bit more of a rotation one. So one can go, one stays, the other goes, the other stays. Trent will still end up getting in and around the box on occasions. I mean, Hazulman's ended up getting a couple of goals this season and being creative in that final third. And that's the spot that I see him taking. He's ju- When you have a player like Trent, especially with the contract situation you've got, and he's trying to do everything you can to keep him on side, <laughs> you kind of do it at points and he's just gone, We'll concede. We'll do. We'll try it out there. And if it works, if it works, which you know, I could, I could see it working because they're both incredibly intelligent footballers. If it works, you've got the best midfield pivot in the league. Simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. You've yeah. got the best midfield pivot in the league because McAllister and Trent are their only weakness would be aerially. Mm. So if we ever play a six foot five attacking midfielder who opposition <laughs> likes to bring balls into in the air, we're a bit fucked. But apart from that. That midfield covers pretty much everything. And it has game-changing abilities in it. It's not just a basic run-of-the-mill pivot where it's just... They can do the simple things, but you don't really want to turn them in the big moments. We have someone who, in Trent, can create from deep. Is one of them can put in such dangerous crosses. And in Trent, you've got... And in McAllister, sorry, you've got someone who can play them incisive through balls to break lines in defence. Every single avenue of attack you could want from midfield They've got it covered. That's why I want to see it tried. If he does it, he does it. If he wants to stick with that deeper defensive midfielder who's a bit more of a destroyer, you'd probably see by Shetty or Endo there. But I do think Trent might just get a, a shot in midfield next season. Let's wait and see, man. I'm, I'm. T- uh, listen, listen to everyone there. Like it's kind of sounding like you made me think. Okay, maybe he would actually be better potentially. At first glance, I am still, I'm still kind of sitting there thinking. I don't know though. Maybe he can tweak that that kind of role for Trent if he does play that right wing back. But Tom, you just said there with the contract situation, trying to get him on side. We know he doesn't even want to play on that right hand side. Really, he wants to play in the midfield. He may this this will be something that Amrum really will have to look at. I can't lie. He's really gonna have to think to himself. I've got a quality player here. In his head, he might be thinking, "Nah, he's a right. He's a right back. Well, he's a right wing back. That might be the best position." for him so to speak but he doesn't want to play there <laughs> what do i do now <laughs> do you know what i mean like i've now got to convince the remember uh, no with no disrespect to amarim he's not pep guardiola he's not jürgen klopp he's not jose Mourinho. he's not coming in here with that level of authority where it's like 
I've done this for X, Y, Z amount of time. Listen to what I say, because what I say usually does happen. He's coming in here with a little bit of a, I still need to prove myself in this league. As Michael said before, he's great in Portugal. Absolutely fantastic. You're, you're now coming to the Premier League, to one of the better teams in the, well, the, the second, third, whatever, however you want to put it, top three teams in this league. The only other team outside of the best team in this league to win this league. So there's going to be a bit of convincing, you know, for him. I see someone ask, um, and guys, I will be going through um, all the uh, all the questions and we will go take a look at um, how it might look with the Liverpool players in this formation and how they might move. Uh, I know Enz has got that in the back waiting. Uh, I appreciate that. I wanted to ask you this quickly before we move on, Michael. Obviously, people are talking about Elliot. They're talking about a few other players. When we're looking at those type of players, and obviously I got this up here quickly because um, I saw someone talk about Zabozola as well. Where do they fit within here? Obviously, here we can see most of their football actually is going down that left-hand side. So that's the area yeah. of the pitch that they do like to focus on in build-up play, in attack. So when they are playing down that side, if we are thinking... I don't know who the left centre back's going to be, so I'm not even going to try and pretend. Let's say Robbo's obviously the left wing back potentially in that position. I don't know who you'd put as a left centre midfielder. Obviously, we'll get into that, and I don't know who you might put further forward. How are we looking at that area? Do you think that's an area of the pitch that he might also need to improve upon, or you, you, you've got someone in mind already? No, I. To be honest, I think the reason why Sporting ta attack a lot down the left side is because of Pedro Gonzalez. I think that's it. Because he's a quality footballer and he's sort of that engine and creator for this team. Like he created the goal against Benfica over the weekend in the in the derby. And I think that's why, because Trincao is good, but he doesn't really have that playmaking. He's a guy who wants to take on the defender, beat a man. Pedro Gonzalez is more of a link-up player. I think more of a sort of Curtis Jones. That's why I look at Curtis Jones. I don't see him in the double pivot in this squad. I think he's more of that Pedro Gonzalez role. Same thing for Elliot. And I think even Dominic Soboslai, I think he's going to play as sort of those two number 10s, either okay. on the right side or the left side, because mostly when he plays for Hungary, Dominic is on the on the left side of the field. Yeah, Whereas that's what in, I see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he's, I mean, he's cooking with Hungary all the time. Mm. For Elliot, I think he's going to be in that Trincao role. He's not going to play as a wing back. We know that. He doesn't have the yeah, pace yeah. or the physicality yeah. to play in that role. So I think Elliot will play in that sort of number 10 on the right side. And you might even see Sobosa on the left side of the 10. That's why I don't think he's going to, you know, Salah, I don't know. Even though <laughs> Salah, very good playmaker. First of all, we will get to that when we get to that. Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get to that, when we get to that. But, keep your but do, when you want, in those sort of positions, when you're trying to find those pockets of space, do you want Salah yeah. or Elliot trying to find those spaces? Who can be a cr better creator in those situations? Because look at the way Elliot's playing. Creator? No, 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 no. Creator? Salah. Well, yes. I think Salah, yeah, still Salah with the yeah. passing. But yeah. in those little small pockets of space, I think Elliot is better than Salah. You want Salah out wide and driving at the defender. That's where I think Salah's best. Elliot, like in these little spot pockets of space, I think Elliot will be flourishing. Cold. No, no, no. Okay. I, I, I agree. I agree with you that Elliot would be cold in this position. And I can see, obviously, I just put that up there. Like, this is kind of why they create the space that they do uh, they do create when they have got that back three and then obviously the one <clears throat> excuse me the one in front and then the two in front of that and then you've got your wing backs and then you're they kind of push one of the attacking midfielders up to play as tom said alongside so basically like, yeah so basically on that left side you would have McAllister as the sort of middle and then on the top would be i guess diaz or sobos like or curtis jones yeah diaz. Yep. i think i'd i'd prefer to if we're saying someone to Almost in the obviously, this is just a passage of play, by the way. Yeah, if we're saying in a passage of play, I would probably be more comfortable when this passage of play is going on to see Zabozala in this position because I've seen him more in this position when he is playing for Hungary. I feel like he'd be more comfortable. I'm not saying Diaz can't do it, I'm not saying Curtis Jones can't do it before anybody kills me in the chat. Just yeah. I just think that Zabozala might just be the best person for this type of role. Again, this is just a passage of play. This is just when the centre back's got the ball, and now he's got the option. The two wide centre backs, as I can see, they've obviously pushed out. But how I liked how the reason why I liked it and why I picked this photo was because you can see. Obviously, it's not going to be near on perfect like it is here, but I can see the idea because 
from what I can remember from this move here, what he's actually going to do is he's going to pass it to the right-sided centre-back. That midfielder that's in front of him, he's the dummy run. He's the dummy run for Gyokerez up front. He really wants to get that ball into Gyokerez. They think it's going into the midfielder. So everyone's obviously going to get drawn, brings the other team up. Dummy run, ball goes past him into Gyokerez. Once it goes into Gyokerez, the centre midfielder then makes that next run. Once he's made that next run, it's almost like you're playing a one-two. Or sorry, the third man run, should I say sorry. Because he that dummy player, he's then going to make the next run after that. He gets the ball, he cuts it through. There's a Bozalai in this photo. He's making the run in behind the defence. So he's really going to be the one who actually scores the goal. Or, yeah, he he's the one who gets the chance at the end of this whole move. And it's so funny because when I saw when I saw this, um, this video and I saw this move being played out, I was thinking, that's crazy because I wouldn't even have thought that he's even getting the ball <laughs> because it doesn't look like he would get the ball. But technically, he would get the ball in this situation because he'd be the next person available because he's the one making that run and no one is picking him up. That's why I just thought Liverpool are good with movement, so to speak. But at the same time, I always I always feel like it's never constructed. It's never something we've worked on. As we've seen recently, in recent weeks, we're having five re twos and all of it, and it. And it almost looks like we don't even know what to do in a situation. I just don't feel like we work on this enough. But, you know, we'll wait and see. I just wanted to quickly show... Um, the weaknesses behind, you know, playing, you know, kind of like a style like this, if I can get it. There we go. Ends, when you see that. So, obviously, this is this is like the weaknesses behind, obviously, playing yeah. attack straight off the rip. So, if the, so the, the thinking here is just before that guy on the, it would be their right, but our left, just before he gets that ball, um, obviously, the left side, left side is centre back has obviously tried to play the pass. They've intercepted that pass in the middle of the park, and then they've played it out wide. Obviously, we can see on the both sides that there's a lot of space. Yeah, we're used to that, by the way, with what we've got. But when you see things like this, do you think that that might be something he may need to tweak? Not really, to be fair, because look at looking at that, most of the teams that we play against in the Premier League are not brave enough to leave players forward. I hear. They end up what you'd notice if the wingers will drop to double up on on our on our wingers and also with the oncoming fullback or wing back coming round. So they always double up. Any team that decides to be brave and leave and leave say let's say they leave their wingers, maybe there's one or two moments where it could work. But but the problem is you leave our wingers one v one with their man. And with loads of space in the box. And if you've got two players making that run through the middle, and that would probably be, I don't know, your two strikers or Sobo, one of the other midfielders, whoever that may be, that's a problem. I don't think they would leave themselves to be outnumbered. So that, it's brave because we, um, obviously, it's in the Portuguese league. So a lot of the teams don't, they don't play low block. They actually just set up with their own systems and try and play football. We're in the mm -hmm. Premier League. If Liverpool comes to town or, you know, we're playing, you know, we're playing someone, Nine times out of ten, they're gonna go with a low block, um, unless it's like Man City or you say Arsenal. Even, even you'd probably say maybe Spurs is another team that might be brave enough. But most of the other teams would set up three, five at the back. We've seen Villa do it. You've seen Spurs do it at times as well, where they've they've gone with the wing backs instead of going with their natural, um, you know, four two three one what they normally play. So uh, if you're brave, it could be a problem. But I don't see the teams, most of the teams in the Premier League, being that brave. To go, we're gonna leave. Yeah, wingers don't go. You stay, and we we'll wait to see if they make a mistake. Because if you do that and allow the players on the ball loads of room and time, and obviously with a new coach, maybe a new way of playing, and maybe a new, you know, final third, you know, um, link up play, you can't allow the players that we have that much space. And I know in a couple of the games we've recently played, that statement probably doesn't make sense because we've had loads of chances and probably not put them all away. But I think in general with a new training, new system, whatever it may be, you, no team in the Premier League is going to be able to leave that much space and, and go, we're going to be brave. No chance. We'll punish you. You can find yourself three, four, five down in the first 20 minutes like we used to smoke teams. Nah, I, I definitely agree with that. Michael, man, what about yourself? When you see this, like, do you think there's, he's going to need to tweak that to fit Liverpool or you think keep doing this high-risk, high-reward kind of football because we're so used to it. 
at this current moment in time. Well, but don't all the top teams do that though? All the top yeah, teams play high risk, high risk yeah. football. Look at what look at Arsenal last night. Arsenal is a perfect example. They played high risk football against Bayern. <laughs> they got caught off a couple, a couple of times. So this is my, this is the only problem I have really with Amorim. He's gonna leave our defensive line exposed. So the two full, the two center backs, whether it's uh, Konate or and then who's gonna be the left center back, we don't know yet. We don't They're know gonna yet. have to do a lot of work. And the issue is Konate is picking up a lot of injuries. And he's going to have to do runs after sprint, after sprint, after sprint. Same thing for the left center back. So we're going to need two guys who physically can do, play in this system. Do you guys believe Konate can? I mean, obviously, he's going to have, he does a lot of work for Trent when they're both fit. This is the issue. Morten Hulman, who is obviously the DM for them now, he does a lot of work down the channels defensively in transition. But also, when you see them press, it's not just one. It's not a one-man press. They press as a team, sort of like Denise and Fluminense. They press as a team, really just directly at the ball. It's not really just a positional defending. So this could be exposed in the Premier League because one thing Premier League has is a lot of good counterattacking teams. Wolves, mm -hmm. West Ham, yeah. uh, Fulham. There's a lot of good. They don't have that in the Portuguese league. You can play that high risk reward football in the Portuguese league against Pacos de Ferreira, Boa Vista, and these sort of teams. Then, obviously, when he went up against the big teams like Porto and Benfica, it's much more even 50 50, kind of like what we see with Liverpool and Man City, Arsenal, and well, I would say Arsenal, Man City, but the last game was uh, not really like that. So, because one team wanted to go defensive, <clears throat> this sort of formation and these sort of openings, the Premier League teams can expose you and take advantage of it. So this is where the two center backs, like I said earlier, they have to be on on game because if they're not on game and the two the two fullbacks as well, if they're not defending in transition, yeah, we could be conceding one or two goals per game. Do you, like do you know? Go ahead. Can I, can I add just a just a tad to that yep. what you're saying as well? I feel like it has to do with timing because I know this still will show the worst case scenario. Yeah, but yeah. yeah no, I think yeah. it's do they we would naturally have the ball in that moment. For them to be in that position, the two wing backs. Yes. So, worst case scenario, we're in the attack. We played it into one of the, you know, the, the tens or so-called tens there. The wing backs would then go, and then they're they're in great position for either we go out wide or go into one of the forward men. But I think if that happens, and it's not timed, where you know normally Liverpool just has their. If we're playing against a team, they got a back five. We just press up a back five against that or a back four. And yeah. we leave them then. We're trying to move the ball side to side to try and find a pocket to get into. Then that's the issue. Because then if we lose the ball when we're going side to side in transition, what Mike Michael's saying, yeah, we'll get punished. But I think if we time it correctly where we still have a good structure and the wingbacks haven't really gone, but they're there, but they're not as high as the last still shows, I think that would defensively would be cool. And then when we when we do play that final pass and then they go, the right time, I think we'll get goals from it or a chance where the team has to then reset and then we have a, a moment where we can get back into our shape, in my opinion. G, G, can you go back to the two photos, the one where there was the the wings being exposed? Oh, the wing being exposed. Well. Yeah, yeah. So this one. I think the only time we get into this situation is when mm. one of the center backs plays a long ball and we have both of the fullbacks up. That's the only yeah. time where I see these, okay. these areas being exposed. In possession, and we're trying to just bop it up side to side, side to side. We're not going to be exposed like this. One of the fullbacks will be sort of like a fourth defensive man, and then we'll have Morton Hillman and, well, I mean, McAllister and Endo sort of trying to pick up the ball in the middle. Yes, he got confused. Yeah. See, I, I like Morton Hillman. I think he's a quality DM. So this is really not going to happen a lot, I would say. This would be a very rare occasion where we get exposed like this, I think, with Amorim. You feel like it'd be more in this kind of this is when obviously yes, exactly like this. Yeah. Yes. So that I if we do lose the ball here, then we have one of the fullbacks at least able to try and cover the transition. Mm -hmm. Whereas because now we don't we don't even see the right wing back here. That's the issue. We don't even see him in this. Yeah. To be fair as well, I, even with just looking at this, I can't think of only the you'd say the, the top teams in the league. I don't see Fulham thinking that they could go and press. How these guys are first. Oh. Is that Benfica they're playing? I think it's Benfica or Braga, one of those two. Yeah, so I, I like can't Braga. see I a Fulham, a West Ham, or one of those type of teams below your Chelsea's, your Man United, all of those teams going, oh, no, we're going to press that high. 
Because the moment you press there and we pop that around in that triangle, the, the whole pitch is exposed then. And then now we've got yeah. runners like your McAllister, can, he can carry. You've got Sobo, he can carry at speed. Graven Birch can carry it. You know, Cody, you've got players, Nunes, Mo, Harvey, they all can carry the ball, in, especially when you've left that much gap. I saw against Man United um, when, when Sobo carried it from edge of our box to the end and it was a great passing move. We should have finished that move off. You know, Darwin decided to cut it back to Sobo. But these are the moments where teams think they can press us. After the first two or three moments, times, they'll be like, no, no, actually, we're going to have to sit a bit further back. We can't allow them to keep doing this to us because we'll get punished eventually. So, yeah, only and the top teams I see trying that. Yeah, I think it's only going to be like Spurs, Man City, Arsenal that would be bold enough to do this, if I'm yeah, going to be that. honest. No, it's Listen, man, uh, I definitely hear it. I definitely hear it. And I think, have you converted me? I would say, after I spent that much time looking at him, I, I do think that he does play good. Bro, as in, I, I don't think you understand how, how tired I was just watching Man, the video. Man's doing a, you're doing your thesis on Amorim today. Bro, li literally. But but to be fair, I watched the video because N sent me a video, uh, Michael sent me a video, and someone else sent me a video. And then, you know, when once you're in one video, now you're down a rabbit hole. Now you're yeah. down into every video that comes out on bloody, you know, bloody uh, YouTube. Then, yeah, to, just, to, just to understand from a different perspective as opposed to just seeing one. Like, I don't even want people to just watch this. I want people to go away. And if Enz does a show talking about Amarim, I want you to listen to that. If Michael does a show talking about Amarim and he's been talking about him, I need you to go listen to that because you can't just take the one bit of information. You kind of need to correlate a, a, a whole bunch of bits of information to then be able to forge your own opinion, your own mind you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And then I watched a couple of highlights of the games because I was like, let me actually see this without the guy telling me this is what happens in the game. Let me see if I actually notice some of the things that he's talking yeah. about. And I saw it in, you know, especially I was watching that Atalanta game. Um, I watched that uh, extended highlights of that. And I was like, ah, you know what? When they have the ball, like even when they're just popping it around and stuff like that, what I liked most, which is what I've been crying out for Liverpool to do for years because Manchester City do it, players movement off the ball it isn't just yes. everyone stands still in 4-3-3 mode and I know that Mo Salah is going to stay out there on the right wing and not move a muscle until the ball actually gets out to him I know that my left winger isn't just going to kind of move in you know straight lines kind of thing like I, I need more midfield area the midfielders are, are all moving around it's not just static and that's what I like the most about the tactic. It wasn't even everything that we've spoken about. It was actually more the movement off the ball that I like the most. Can I add a bit to that just that quickly as well, G? We yeah, have yeah, yeah. Been, do you know with like Sobo, McAllister, Curtis when he plays Gravenberch, and you can add even Elliot in there. They do try that. But what I've noticed yeah, is yeah. some of the players on well, I don't <clears> want to say <throat> nervous, bro, but it feels like when the centre backs have it at times, it's like they don't trust that pass into them. Because I've yeah. seen the whole Give it to Rodri, that would be a McAllister. And then Sobo will make a little run. It's not even a big run. It's just a slight five-yard run into a pocket. I know McAllister would give that. But when I look at the other guy, sometimes they go, mm -mm, oh, let me go safe. Let me go out wide. Or let, let me go back and then we can go across. I'm like, no, 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 no. Just give it to him in that because that's what Man City do. And yeah. what it does, it attracts a group of players going, oh, my days, he's turning our, you know, our final exactly. third. Exactly. We need to get to him, and then it frees up another runner, pops it off to him. Now you got the, all of these guys conversion onto one guy. He's popped it around the corner. Space. We saw it yesterday against um, Real Madrid. Ball goes out wide. Simple two passes into Rodri. Rodri then plays it um, sort of into Bernardo. Bernardo into Rodri. Rodri just lays it off to 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 Foden, and he turns and shoots. Yeah. Just simple couple of passes to get open up the game. They slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. Bang, 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 goal. But we sometimes don't trust it. We'll go with a safer option. I'd say seven times out of ten, we'll go safe. Safety first. Safety. And th that's what bugs me because you're almost like we already play a high risk, high reward system. I know maybe he doesn't want to add that extra bit of it. I mean, we can see chances as it is at the moment. So maybe mm. there is that. But I think you are right in terms of it's almost like the players don't even. But I feel like that's more. We'll know when Amarim comes in, but I feel like that's more tactical though because I'm I'm not. I, I, I'd be very shocked if Amarim came in and you're telling me that man like McCall not even McAllister because he does it, but Curtis Jones, what he can't take the ball in that 
in that space where he, no, where he knows three men are going to be oh, on him. Yeah. He, he can definitely, he can, like, that's not, that's got nothing. I've seen him do it on odd occasions. So it can't be, I don't even think it's them. I actually just think it's tactical. Don't play that pass. We're already <clears throat> committing too many players forward in this move or in this pattern of play. Just don't do it. I've, and again, seen, I've seen McAllister give it to Sobo in an, a pocket. He goes, he turns to think, okay, Mac will move or the other midfielder, the other eight will come in and then I can lay it into him. But when, once he turns, and I promise you, just pay attention, he'll turn, he'll look, 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 the pass won't be there, he'll then go back to the right back. Yeah. Because in his mind, he's going, right, Mac, Mac has punched it into me, I turn into the next eight, we open the game up, get the ball into the box. But as soon as he turns, he's, he's looking, looking, there's a pass, is there a pass, no pass, and then he goes, Back to the play, and then we just go back and then across it. It's like, bro, just like I hate it, bro. When I'm seeing that we play a ball in the final third and the guy doesn't turn, he punches it back into the mid. I'm like, no way, just uh, turn. turn. <laughs> no, on, on the three ends, like, but we, again, now we're getting this new manager. <clears throat> it, whether it's Amram or not, we're getting a new manager anyway. So I'm just praying that it's now going to see football. We're going to see more football and a little bit less of the you need to be a real top athlete first before you are a footballer, <laughs> you know, so to speak. Because I feel like we've got a good mixture of those two anyway. We've got athletes and we've got footballers in the team. So add in whoever it is you want to add in, whatever players that you want to sign, add that into the mix of what we've got here. Come on, guys. Even me, the, the, the most pessimistic person you know, even I can't turn around and say, Nah, Liverpool got a solid team and they're playing good football and they look like they're actually going to do something because they've got the good... They, when we look at Arsenal, you think to yourself, Arsenal lack experience. Haven't done it at this level, haven't won anything at this top level. Got good young players in there, some old guys who won things that in Jorginho like a, you know, a little while back and they've got players who are like in that mid-level where they're like, the next step is to get to the top level. Cool, that's a weird mixture. Manchester City or Manchester City. Liverpool have that blend. We've got youngsters coming through. You've got players in the mid-level where Nunes, their next stage is to get to that top level. And then you've got your world-class players. Add all of that plus the experience. You, come on, man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And then think of all the different types of players that we've got. Ends. Let's walk through this, man. <clears throat> Liverpool um, team. Yeah, I think, well, let's go <laughs> Amarim's team. Um, obviously, we know Allison is the better goalkeeper out of him and Kelleher. Yeah. But I don't know, Savage has mentioned this, and I, I think so as well. Kelleher is the better passer. And I don't know if Ruben's team necessarily relies upon a good passing goalkeeper. But not I've, necessarily. Does not. it need to be? And that's the thing. So then that's the only question I had. That's fine. Let's go with Ali in there then. And it wasn't saying Ali wasn't good because I know some of you guys were like, I can't believe Oh, Ellie. don't worry. The space tomorrow morning is definitely going to say that. Ellie said <laughs> Alison is not as good as Keller. <laughs> yep. no that idea. is exactly the name of the space. Thank you for the title. <laughs> um, and then obviously out on that side it will be Canate, wouldn't it? Straightforward. Yep. Virgil through the middle. Oh, come on. Just, so, just so that I ask you, obviously I showed you before Mm -hmm. And we saw with Quartes how he steps into it. And I know you mentioned Virgil. He does, you know, pop around on He's different parts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I, 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 saw I, him, I saw him here against Brighton. And then I saw him here against Sheffield. But is that... I, I, I just wonder sometimes, like... Because obviously Quartes is there for the passing ability, which we know Virgil's obviously got on lock. But Virgil isn't playing as a like he isn't playing as a center back now he's playing mm. as a left-sided center back so the angles are a lot different when he is making those passes anyway and obviously i'm only talking just from the point of we only ever see him make that one pass which is out to Salah. i'm not saying he can't pass the ball just that's the pass so are we saying it's going to be the same from him in that middle no because normally what happens when we defend it's normally just these two back, and then you'd have um Wataru would probably be sitting in this little pocket here, just screening it. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't think we necessarily need him to go anywhere, to be fair. The difference between our team and obviously sporting, I'm not gonna knock their players and don't think that they're good, but Liverpool have got you would say the better players. 
So yeah, cool. what yeah. you're being asked to do, maybe like, you know, Quate is being asked to step in here. But I don't think Virgil would then be asked to step in here. Why would he need to? I feel like the midfielders we have and the, the type of players we have can take care of that. Unless we're playing against a team, maybe Man City and we're trying to outnumber them in, in maybe in the midfield area and you want someone to step in to, to create an overload, maybe. But I, I don't think we need to, to be fair. I don't necessarily think he needs to move from there. I'm just here to ask the questions. Um, who goes here then? Are we buying a new one um, in terms of the left-sided of the three? Or do we have the... Um, do we already have someone in the squad that can do it? Because the idea would be Gomez, but I want a naturally more balanced left footer there. If you don't buy someone, and I'll let Michael answer in terms of who he would sign, mm. I didn't have Gomez there anyway. He wasn't my left-sided centre-back. My okay. left-sided centre-back was actually Kwanzaa because I feel like he'd actually be a bit more comfortable because he, when with the, with the wide centre-backs, that's what I was looking at, Obviously, you got Diamante there, but they're all kind of comfortable on the ball. Kwanzaa yeah. is way better than Gomez on the ball, way better. Like, it, it, there is a level between the two players. You can see that quite clearly when he brings the ball out. So I wouldn't feel that Amarim would look at... I, I think Amarim would look at him and think, well, this guy's actually mad comfortable when he is out there on that left side anyway, when he does play left-sided centre-back. So why wouldn't you want... Someone like that, comfortable on the ball, can pass the ball, can dribble out of possession, is super, super calm in most situations. The only thing that would be lacking slightly is the pace side. And he's still relatively quick, but Gomez is obviously is quicker. I, I would go with Konza, but if you guys want, like, if we're, that's if we're not signing anybody, by the way. Yeah, I would pro I'd probably go for Kwanzaa in our squad, but we got to sign somebody. We yeah, got to get yeah, a left footed yeah. center back. We just have to. It's going to help massively with the build up play. So, I mean, now the question would be who do we sign? Yeah. Do we, go, do we go for something? Do we go for someone that is experienced with Amorim and Inacio? Or do we go. Uh, that's going to be a tough choice to see who we sign, to be honest. Because I know everybody will say Hinka Pia. Bayer Leverkusen are going to want 70 Inacio. million. I want Inacio, bro. I think the age profile is there. And he knows him. He knows the system. Left footed. He, he's, he's like the perfect fit ba based around age, availability, knows the system really well. And not only that, his price tag ain't going to be a madness. It's going to be just right. Just within the Liverpool budget. That 65 million area we normally do. Really right. do, we know? do we know his release? I think it's 50 good. to 60 if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Somewhere around there. To be honest, ends. I'm a, I'm a hipster, so I go for really guys that are not not known. So that's why everybody in the chat right now, when you go to other, other Liverpool streams, you say mm. we got to sign this player. So just just keep an eye on William Pacho from Frankfurt, him or Murillo from Forest. And that Murillo guy from Forest, bro, that that dude is built like a linebacker, but on the ball, <laughs> that guy, he is cold. That guy from Frankfurt, on my football manager, say with Brighton. He moved to um because when he said his name, I was like, why does that name ring a bell? Like I've never heard of that name. And then I just went to go look now. He signed for Barcelona, I said. There you go. <laughs> and obviously, this go, is man. like Barcelona are good on the safe. Like, what would these price? So what would he offer and what price tag would you think he would? Yeah, for real. Yeah, let us know. Look, Michael, for Pacho, yeah, probably yeah. he just he just got signed by Frankfurt from Antwerp. I would say maybe 30 million, somewhere around there. I mean that's great to me. That screams FSG. <laughs> he's a, he is he is an FSG sort of signing. So, but when I watch him play, and also he's playing in a in a back five right now for Frankfurt, so he's kind of comfortable in that situation, left footed. Mm -hmm. I think he would be perfect because I think he could be a bit. He's too expensive, even though I rate the player. He's too expensive. Mm -hmm. He's not seventy what about, million. What about the profile of him, age wise, and you know, uh, Pacho is 22. 22 and physical, speedy, speedy, very quick. physical, speedy, quick. Yep. Totally. Maybe not the greatest on the ball, but defensively he will give he will give us a lot of steel that we need. Him, Virgil Diamande is great on the ball, by the way. Diamande, yeah, I think I would say he's pretty good on the ball. But not like, better than Inacio on the ball. But Diamande defensively is better than Inacio, so that's going to so, have to be the balance. Do you want yeah, a player who's going to be really good with build-up play, or yeah. do you want a really good defender? That's what that's going to be the issue that we're going to have this summer. 
you've got Kanate on one. The thing is, you got Virgil's kind of both, but you got Kanate on one side, who's a really good defender. Very. De By the way, the injury stuff we need to, to have a conversation about later on. But you've got Kanate, who's good yeah. defender. I feel like wouldn't you want then someone if that left side is centre back to be also to be good on the ball? I don't feel like he has to be as good at defending as a Kanate for the balance to work out. If that makes sense, because Kanate isn't great on the ball. He's good. He's improved, but. I would want someone who's really comfortable on the ball. So then you're that saying side. that, G, it would probably be a Nacio. Yeah, then Nacio, then Nacio. Then it's a Nacio. <laughs> then it's a Nacio. Only because he's got the release clause as well. I feel like we'll just pay it with no problems. Like one Carlo. I want to check out, to check out this this defender you're talking. About. I'm gonna do some take a little look. Yeah, at you gotta to do, you gotta check him out, guys. He's he's a he's a beast. No, I definitely will, man. Um. The two in the middle, then let's go. McAllister is one. We know this one. That's that's who is the partner with McAllister? Someone asked it before. No one said Endo, like, not even once. We had a we didn't even mention yeah, I, I would, I would put Endo here. I would, yes, because I want someone a bit more defensive alongside. That's McAllister. exactly that's exactly why. If we play Trent next to McAllister, exactly, we might concede exactly. one or two goals a game. As much as McAllister <laughs> has been really good in transition with defensively, that's going to be a lot of work. I mean, a lot. So I'd rather have Endo in, that, in this formation. So you got Besetic, you got Curtis, you got Sobo, you got Trent. <laughs> we have too many midfielders now. Bro, all of a sudden now we've got with all these midfielders. midfielders. Even Gravenberch yeah, yeah. could play in the double pivot. Gravenberch, well, yeah. Gravenberch, yep. Yeah. Wow, that's actually mad. We went from crying for midfielders like crying to now we're, we're like yo we might need to just sell a midfielder just to make space just for the <laughs> sake of making space in the team that's crazy um, so you don't like, so you guys don't think either of you you guys are not are saying you don't think we need to sign another mid central midfielder like to play in that role i don't think no. so. i don't okay. think i think we got perfectly the qualities that we need in the midfield for amorim the, but the problem is then is the center back and then the left wing back. Those are the yeah. those are the two positions where I say we need to go sign somebody. Okay. Who? Because all right, I've I've heard a few people say that Robbo isn't you know. I don't know. Is he is he falling off or I, I don't want to use that word. But I think the wing back would be the perfect position for it. Him or Simicas. I feel like. Robo just being up and down on that side, and it's not necessarily. I don't even think he would need to necessarily be up and down. He's just more in an advanced role where he can use all of his energy. Where for Liverpool is actually the left back, so he has to go up and down. He has to be back at left back and doing overlaps. As a wing back, I don't necessarily think you need to do all of that. Yes, you need to drop in and make sure you're you're back defensively, but. Got three guys. That's always going to be there. Mm. Um, the thing is, what know. you're saying, I think, is true. I think the role suits him. I just don't think he's good enough in terms of that. Might be the perfect role for him. Because playing mm. football manager right now, if you put him in that role, he'd probably be like three stars in that role. Whereas I feel like if you just went out to buy someone they'd automatically just be a four-star player in that same role that he's doing. Not that he can't do the role, he can mm. do the role. I just think you can get better in that role. And that's where, like Michael says here, I'd end up just getting like an eight nori type of player. He's definitely someone I'd like. I mean, we're not, mm. we're obviously we're saying we can't get like that Teo Hernandez and all these type of guys. If you were to get no, we Yeah, we're like, we don't, I don't, and, he, and to be honest, I probably even prefer him at left side of centre-back anyway. So, unless Alfonso Davis somehow is available and we can get him in, but he's injury prone. So I don't even know with him either. Nah, so, he's, he's going to Real Madrid anyways. And and this is, I'm just throwing out names like of like top yeah, yeah, yeah. players. And I think Peyton Nori is a really good player. And you've seen him this season when he's playing for Wolves. Have you seen like recently been invert, but like his invert. Oh, he's killing is, everyone he plays up against. Killing it, bro. Killing he's playing it, like man. in the 10 role I've seen a couple of times. Bro. Oh, hey, Nuri. Is playing very nice well this season. So then, then is you know like Robo. We still need to see more seasons of him. At this well, that that puts us on three left backs. If we do sign him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, go on. No, no, I'm saying he puts us on three left backs if we sign him. So who do we um, 
get rid of at the three then? Any of them. Uh, I, I feel like not, sorry, not the three, but who are we getting rid of in terms of Robo or Simicast? Simicast, man. Simi. Simicast. Yeah. Because then you have a then then you have what you're asking for, which is that depth to change if mm -hmm. Aignor ain't playing well or he just needs to be, have a rest. What to bring on Robo? Come on, bro. Like that's a banging that's option to have on the bench. That's a banging oh, option. We're nearly done. We're nearly done. This is who I think should play in this role here. How do you yes, to play? Agreed. That's who I think should play there. This side is a difficult one. I, um, I don't think Salah will make the cut for this one. Um, I think it's either it has to be either. <laughs> G. <laughs> Just finish off what you're finishing, bro. Like, then I'm gonna keep quiet. <laughs> I'm trying to think what's that because you've got your creator slash goal threat in Sobo on the other side. Do you need another creator or do you need another striker type? So you, you've got Jota, you've got Gapo that could probably play in that play in that position. But you also have Harvey as well. But then I can see Harvey trying to do the creative stuff as well. If you've got one creator on one side, you need maybe a, a goal threat on the opposite side. How much would move the Arlo cost you? We can't Jeez. afford to Jeez. We're gonna have to rob a bank. <laughs> no, God, you'd think it. we're you'd think we're we're some poor team, you know. But obviously the owners, I know, I know what they are. I know what they are. Gee, do you know how much Musiala is gonna cost? How much do you think it would realistically cost? Like if someone was to buy realistically, it, I would say 145 million. Bearing in mind is he's he's not well, there's been a higgy higgy with the contract situation. It doesn't look like he wants to sign a new deal at the 100, moment. 145 million. He's going to cost at least something like that. He's actually got one year left. Oh, I didn't actually know that he had one year. I thought it was two years. Yeah, but he got one year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's, what, yeah. that's why I say, like, what you don't he think. He would still cost around 100 million, though. Okay. With the age I'm he's at and the, and the talent he's at, I, I would probably say, like, 100 million. Hmm. It'd be like what Bellingham went for. But, G, and who, but G, who do you think is. Where, but G, would you take Verts or Musiala? Musiala. We had this conversation earlier on today. I know we did. I want Verts. Florian. Yeah, he went, Florian. I said, I'll take Musiala. Because Verts, Verts, is, probably, Verts is probably going to cost $100 million as well, I would I would say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Verts? I would probably take him over Musiala. Nah, I, I'm not <laughs> here with the injury-prone guy. Like, as in, I feel no, like no, he's no, one I'm not talking tackle about away. No, no, I feel like he's one tackle away from just being injured for six years. I think with Musiala, <laughs> no. I'd love to you. Damn. He is the most versatile player that you will find, and he can operate like Bernardo Silva. He can operate at such a high level in most positions. Yeah, to be listen, Motiala is, is good, but he's also inconsistent. Yeah, so is Verts. Verts isn't perfect. No, nah, he's not. He, no, nah, before his injury, he was balling out, and then he got injured. He wasn't balling out to the extreme. Yes, he was, bro. Don't do that, man. He was nah, balling Verts was, out. Verts was balling out, bro. So, nah, so Luis Diaz is not balling out, then? No, I'm not, not saying he's no, not. No, I'm no, just no, saying. we're not saying he's not balling out. I'm the just agenda. First, it's Salah, now Luis Like, What is going on? He's not consistent, bro. But he's a baller. So, I don't even understand. What, what's not consistent? What? So, uh, are we saying... Sorry, he goes on the right side. He goes on the right side. I've thrown Jota in there, but... Musiala, man. But we're, not gonna buy, we're not going to do three signings, I don't think. No, no. Okay, cool. Um, Two makes sense. Threes, I don't know. Three if the money's right, though. Like, like Musiala will be the stu... I don't think we'd sign something like him. Three if we're um, selling players. Yeah, yeah. Diaz. Um... So you've got the goal threat. And he can also link play. But I almost feel like the person who's in that position, I don't feel like Jota is the right kind of player for that type of position, though. Like, sometimes link up, I don't know. Like, I, I just, I don't trust Jota in that kind of position. You trust him now just by changing it slightly? No. What did you no. change? I, I, no, would, no. I would change Jota as a striker. <laughs> That's where you gotta play Jota. You gotta play him at the striker. Yeah, like if he's gonna play anyway, he's gotta kind of be up front, like. Yeah. And then I Salah. 
I keep telling you, bro, it's only going to be Salah. Like, no one else is playing. Yeah, it's that. only going to be Salah. Yeah. Who else is going to put that Ishmael like Salah? We have to just swap <laughs> to put the Lion Salah for the position. That's it. Simple. Yeah. That's the new front three, so to speak. So, realistically, with this personnel, we're, we're probably going to sell Diaz and we're going to yeah. sell. We're going to sell somebody else. Yeah, we have to. We'd have to. Yeah. Well, so Oki says like, Salah, and we're right. Yeah. Because how that's much is Inori going to cost? That's a very 50 good million, question. 60 million? Yeah, that's a very good question. Maybe 22. Is he, so... Yeah, I think he's pretty, he's pretty young still. Maybe. Big up er- Erigami, Luis Diaz, and more speed and error than her. Listen, that's good if you want to be a gymnast. I'm just saying for a footballer. In that position, <laughs> then, that's what we need. Like, I don't need. Listen, I'm more aerodynamic and then thing. I'm like, all right, that's cool for a gymnast and that, not for what we need. And no disrespect to Diaz because Diaz is being playing well recently. If we sell Salah and put a hundred on verts, I'm not putting another hundred and selling Salah. Or do you mean? I thought he meant like sell Salah to them and give them a hundred mil. I was like, bro, he's like a hundred. No, no, if you sell Salah and then put a hundred on works, we'll get more than a hundred for Salah. And then I'd rather take Muziala because I, I don't think there is going to be getting used to any type of pace. Yeah, I feel like he's just liking his inconsistency, guys. All right, fair enough. Yeah, I, I'd prefer the inconsistency. I, that's I prefer that. I don't like I don't like flashing the pants, and I feel like he would end up being just one uh, of those guys. And it's okay, he wants an inconsistent manager as well in Deserbi, so it all makes sense. <laughs> Inconsistency players and managers. Wow, okay. Oh man. Win Bro, losing guys are moving. Like, I'm, I'm I'm actually shocked at what I'm hearing. Man, are actually no, telling me G, that G, 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 G. inconsistent. No, I, I've G, never even G, been go, G, go back to your Twitter post. It's like when someone says I don't like strawberries, it means I don't, you know, I like strawberries, I don't like bananas. We're not saying we don't like Musiala, bro. We're just saying we prefer. No, 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 no. I, I know what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. As in, I, I, as in, I'm shocked that you're saying that though, because then in the same breath you're then saying that you, you man, acting as if like this brother Verts has been basically near on perfect his entire career, and I'm like, no way. Like, only twenty, bro. Let him live, man. Been perfect. How old is Musiala? How old twenty is as well, but one's yeah. more consistent than the other. Simple as. That's what you th- uh, listen. But, that's what you do think. you think that's a reflection of the club as well and, and the manager and everything? Do you know what I mean? One's that buying as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but when one, he was one one out last season. One, he helped yeah, to win the league. Yeah, he was out last season. Yep, <laughs> and this season as well. What are we doing? <laughs> what? What? Man, don't remember Musiala playing the, um, DM? Hey, listen, don't let me get a taste, man. Didn't say I don't <laughs> like Musiala, bro. I like him. Yeah, ends is listen. I take Musiala. <laughs> Listen, they're both ballers. Let, like, let, let's not yes. even. They're both they ballers. ballers. And if we got either, I would be. I'd be. No I'd one would complain. No. Yeah. One would no. Complain. I mean, I'd complain and say. I mean, if you could have got Muziala, then why don't you just get him? But I will be happy with Verts. And I think Verts he could be good in this position. But then could it's the position if he, played. If, if he comes into this, <laughs> if he comes into this, yeah, someone else has to be getting sold. Like as in. First of all, Salah. I haven't mentioned Gapo. Obviously, still got Diaz. If he comes into this position, I'm assuming Salah's leaving. Yeah, so cool. you still yeah, got obviously. Then you got Elliot. You got Curtis Jones. Uh, who else is in that position? I think that's it, isn't it? To be fair, you need a second team, so maybe these guys can just be bench players for the time being. But when when mm-hmm. do we see the starting eleven? Do we think we can win the prem with this and with these ha- tactics if and formations? If I saw this, I saw this yes. no. Is there a simulator we could put this on? I'd love to see how this plays out. FIFA. Oh, yeah, an FM. Yeah, FM or FIFA. I'll see if actually if I can do an FM. If I can just, like, create a team. Well, you got Liverpool. Just put Nacio in it, change the system. Put um, To be fair, technically you could. Because all you'd need to do is go to the... I'm sure if you just go to the editor. To the yeah, FM and, editor. Just put them, and just put the players in. And then just see if it works. Hmm. So, G, see, see, you say that we can't win the league with this team. Well, what's missing then? Because we got goal scorers. We got defensively solid. We got a good midfield. What's missing? You know what? I'll be real. That's just my agenda pushing through. Because I look at this Liverpool team and I think to myself, 
with the players that you have at this at right now, yeah, I don't feel like you should be in a position to be winning the league or even in a chance to win the league. So really, I should be saying yes because they've proven that they can get into a title race. It's just whether they can really learn the role. That right side, people are going to just be vexed anyway next season. We're going to be hearing the same things. Defensively, these men are all over the gap. Trent has gone walkabouts. We don't know where he is kind of thing. I know we've got the back three. I know it's not being defended that same way, but bro, I promise you, it's going to be... It's going to be... It's going people to be, are saying we need a DM in the chat. Still need a six. It depends on what type of DM would be available. That would be the only way I'd look at that. That's it. Like, who's available like that? Would you get someone from the Prem or would you go elsewhere? Again, availability, bro. Like, yeah, honestly, it would just literally be who would be available within good budget to sign. Then, yeah, I would sign. I would blatantly say, like, I wouldn't have no problem signing another a better DM than Endo. He's not the best. Like, man could find better ones, but. And what about Bas- Basetich then? Who? What do we do with him? Stefan. The young Spanish Serbian. I'll be honest with you. You see, you see with Stefan, yeah? I don't really like, I'm not really like fussed about what we do with, like, what we do with him. Like, I'm more with him. He's more like a future type of player. I don't think he's that good enough to start in the team right now. No, so. but that's the, that's the thing. He can be like a backup, but then if we get another DM, then he's going to be third rank behind Endo still. Send him out. Uh, yep. Send him out. Because either way, remember, he's come back from this crazy layoff. Klopp's already said he's going to have to play under-21s football first before I even see a man kick a ball for the first team. Do you, you get what I'm like, I, 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 Listen, I have no idea yeah. how it's going to turn out for him. So I'm just not that... He's not Phil Foden where I'm like, yeah, now I've got to keep this guy around because he's that good where he can easily play in this first... Like, he's not that level. So would I miss him if he went out on loan? No way. Like, he could go on loan and that's it. You know what I mean? That's it. We have got some players coming back, Cavalier as well. Um, I see a couple of people mentioned in the chat and Tyler Morton. They, they're two that's having good bro, seasons on their loan. As fast as you want on the transfer list, bro. As fast as you want. Wow. No, but not even in a rude way. But come on, Morton, really? Man's been here for how long? And you, you, you watch him even... play, man. Might change your mind, bro. I don't think his style of play, from what I've seen at Hull, would even be good enough to even play here. But even if you think it is good enough, he's probably at the bottom of the list of midfielders, like midfielders that we do have, even That's if you fine. think he's good enough. You, you just want the exotic names. It's all good, bro. Say what you say, how you feel. It's just one I mean, exotic. we have McAllister and Endo. They're not exactly the most exotic names that you I'm know. Saying after you said when we the questions around, do we need another six? You said, no, nah, uh, Morton can't do the job. So if he can't do the job, who's the exotic guy that you want to get in? I never said we need to get an exotic guy. I'm just saying he's the bottom midfielder that we have. Like, who else is that? Like, f- list all the midfielders that we've got. Where does he rank in that list? If you had to r- rank the list. Where does he go, bro? In terms of the midfield, centre midfield. Yeah, yeah, just literally centre midfield. Um, For this role here. We only got... Wataru can play there. And uh, McAllister. Jones. Can play nah, there. Jo- yeah. The can play there. No, 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 no. We're talking about actual, you know, these men are more the creative, more forward thinking players. Jones. Jones. No, jo- Jones was. I think he just adapted his game to so he could fit into this team. No, but okay, but we can only go based off what we've seen. For like at this present moment in time, Jones is a central midfielder. I can't look mm. at him any other way. I just know he can play another position. So Clark I, and Clark and um and uh, McConnell's got games. Um, I think Tyler Morton's better than them two. Yeah, Europa League games. Like, are they getting Champions League games next season? We don't know, bro. True. We don't know. You know, no. preseason might be great. What I've noticed with these youngsters. It's you know before when they when they came into the team you're like you can see he's not ready. Clark's played in the Premier League. You, he's still got way to go. Kwanzaa, obviously, he's, you know he's got way to go. But you can see Bradley, all of these guys when called upon and stepped in, have have, have done a job. I think if preseason comes around the corner and the manager goes, oh yeah, not a free for all. I'm not saying that anyone can play, but if there's a certain crop that he thinks is can be the next breakthrough, and they get the opportunity, I can see them. Fighting for a spot, man. You already see what Kwanzaa is dealing with, telling man about condolences and that. So, 
you got other like-minded players, man. Maybe they start <laughs> saying the same thing. Cavalio is definitely going to want to play for Liverpool. I don't think he wants to come back and be on the bench. So I can see pre-season as a, as a, as a point to prove. Morton might be the one that goes, I'm tired of being loaned out. I go on loan and I do well. So give me an opportunity. Listen, everything you're saying could potentially happen. But if we looked at it from... Sorry, man, you guys, No, you guys want the exotic guys. It's fine. No problem. Yep. Uh, honestly, I'm going to go through the questions, guys. So if you've got any questions, leave them in the chat. Yeah, I got to head out, buddy. No, no, no. It's all, bro. It's all love, man. It's all love, man. Thank Big you for coming. Big up, G. Guys, up, make sure you over to Michael Talks Football and subscribe to his channel. Please. Uh, Mean Ends will close Please. it Please. out. Please. Then, a uh, question on from Honesty. Why is it when it... Oh, no, we've done that one already. Uh, Off-topic question. Have you guys seen Julian Ward is linked with Manchester United? Yes, oh. I did, actually. Couldn't care. That. Yeah. The, the, that was kind of my... Um, you meant Everyone said he was shit anyway, bro, so why do we care? <laughs> yeah, very true. Uh, da, 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 da. That was... Not Edward. <laughs> if Edward uh, went, I would have been mad, though. When he was linked at that time, I was... I was yeah, I would have been mad if he went. Yeah, of course. <laughs> um, let's see, Aaron. Could Seth Vandenberg have a future? I mean, we didn't even mention his name. But um, N's kind of a big name on the right side, so fair enough. Makes sense. It could be what we did with Quartes because I remember he had a similar similar time. He came in, no one really rated him. Yeah. Um, and then he had to go away and learn his craft. He's been okay, to be fair. I haven't paid attention of late in terms of how his development is going, if I'm being totally honest. But it could be what we might loan him out again. I think I want to see some of these players get loaned to Premier League clubs or to teams in Europe that know that they're going to play and we can consistently see them play. I don't like these over these dead loans that they that we keep sending some of our players on. Like I get it, man. The right it needs to be the right environment where we can have a say in it. But I need them to go to where they can then develop. You know, like how Kwanzaa went, he got he developed. Bradley went developed at Bolton. What Tyler Morton's doing now as well. I think he's ready as well. He's had spells at what Blackburn and now Hull. Yeah, yeah man. I, th- I think we need we need, but I think we need some Premier League loans. Does it have to be Premier League? Can it not just be? Like, yeah, because I'm seeing now. Nah, because I'm seeing Fafana like that's gonna go back to Chelsea, bro. And he's cooking. He's he's doing well in the Premier League for um, for Burnley, and he's a Chelsea player. He's a Chelsea striker, bro. So I know he's had the experience now. Going, oh well, I've got this amount of goals in the Premier League. I know I can do well in a better team. You know, can I get more goals? And maybe can I add more assists? Can I improve? We don't have no players in the Prem, bro. No. I, I agree. He was with Arsenal don't. playing the other day as well, and the player couldn't play because he's an Arsenal player. Who was Arsenal's know. last game? Who was it? I can't even remember who did. They beat someone 3 0. I think it's oh, one right. of the Brighton players. Yeah, bro. One, one of them is, is an Arsenal loanee. I, I didn't even know. I actually didn't even know. But um, Luke, I agree with to be fair. I have. Um, I um, definitely want to see more players move out to the Premier League, but at the same time, I'm more concerned with just doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be the Premier League for me. I, I'm really what I meant to say was the top league. I'm just yeah. tired of these whole cities and Blackburn. I'm like brother, like that's why when Carvalho did go to RB Leipzig, I was like, okay, yeah. Yeah. they're going to a really good team in Germany. Teams playing Champions League football as well. It'd be fantastic to see what you're like. When you didn't cut the grade and cut the mustard there, I was a bit like, mm, okay, fair enough. We can use circumstances, but ultimately didn't make it. So I was a little bit annoyed. Uh, honestly, again, question, if the three at the back don't work immediately, how long before he changes his formation? He won't. Yeah, I don't feel like he doesn't sound like a guy who will just change. He will just keep going. I've well, heard he's quite stubborn, to be fair. So what, What? Um. so like Klopp then? So like, I think what yeah. Tom said and obviously Klopp. Michael said, um, they've done. I think they've watched more games and and done a bit more yeah, research yeah. on him. So they said he he sticks to his, his principles. So, but what I like is he will change the variation of that system. It just means the system will still be the same in terms of the the three at the back the formation will stay the same. Feel you. Uh, big up Brad H in the building. Uh, guys, please make sure before we head out, you are smashing the like before you get out of here. Uh, Brad H, would we buy one or two centre backs? 
I would buy two. Mm, yeah. I think that's the position now we need to sort out because I think we sorted the midfield, we sorted the forward line. I think, yeah, the next move now is because we've neglected the back line for a bit now, haven't we? So mm -hmm. I think that's the, the next step. Word, 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 word. Uh, Onity is asking, why are we looking at eight Nori? There's a Stupinan, Robinson. Oh, no, Nori, why are we looking yeah, at the good players? Sorry. Have you seen, have you guys seen Scanlon? He's a baller. Look, he's a good player, but he's definitely not ready for first team. He's not ready. He found a new long term deal as well. Was it yesterday or today? Um, I rate him. Yeah. And um, Savage knows a lot about him as well because he's from the, uh, we bought him from the Birmingham Academy. Oh, okay. I didn't even know that's yeah. what we got him. So, yeah, yeah, and, and no, nah, he's he's a cold player, man. But I, do you know what? I prefer him as a winger. I don't. I know he plays left back and he can play left wing back. But I pre in in preseason we was using him a lot as a winger instead. Mm. So, but I like him there, man. I think he's tricky and he's he's direct. Nah, I I definitely agree. We even definitely. got we still got Owen Beck as well. I swear he's on loan as well. Yes, I believe yes, 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 yeah, we do. Yeah, we, well, he's on loan, I, I think. But yeah, yeah we've got him as a player. Um, yeah. Question: What about Harvey? Where does he and Ryan Gravenberch fit in the system? Even a Bobby Clark and Garvalio ends. Where does Gravenberch fit in this system? Um, either in the two, the two ten areas, or in the center, the double pivot. Mm. And he will play well. No. I definitely hear that. Uh, this might sound mad. Could Trent play as the right sided centre back? I start this with you sent this uh, uh, big up LFC Aaron. You sent this about an hour ago, literally. And I remember looking at this comment because I was going to bring it up when we were talking about what the centre backs' roles are in the team. Um, but obviously we went, we went through. But I don't think that would be the maddest thing that you could do, if that makes sense. Like it wouldn't be. I don't think it'll be as mad as people might think it is putting Trent in that right-sided centre-back role because of the passing. But, of course, it's whether you trust him to just stay in that position and not want to go yeah. walk about. You need Ibu in that position, right? Yeah, exactly. Ibu is the guy for that one. Uh, question, isn't Curtis Jones with Trent better as a double pivot? So where does McAllister play? Oh, maybe McAllister further forward, I'm assuming. He'd have to be in the team. Somewhere. Curtis is like, don't get me wrong, Curtis is cold, man, and I think he'll he'll do he'll be fine, but yeah, I don't know, man. I prefer McAllister and, and whoever else. Maybe maybe Curtis can play, but if Ruben and obviously he prefers to have more of a natural defensive minded because normally what happens is when the when one if McAllister goes forward, Wataru or what his system does, the want the defensive minded one would sit in. And protect the back line, the back three. Uh, I don't know. I don't know McAllister will go forward. I feel like there will be a massive gap if we don't play a defensive-minded player there. No, because they're both going to try and get involved in the play, and and they might just leave a hole. That's definitely true. That's actually definitely true. Uh, last couple of questions, guys. We've been on here for two hours. Love to everybody who's obviously. Been rocking with us talking tactics over here on GTV. Uh, big up, Raul. Uh, can I ask something? Of course, you can. If it's possible, can Amarim adapt 3 4 3 to a 4 3 3 to suit Liverpool's squad and bring his concept to play, not the typical formation? That's a very, very good question. Very, very good question. What do you think, Enz? Do you think that like we can still keep the principle but have our formation? i.e. because we're so used to playing 4-3-3, or do mm. you believe that he has to continue playing that 3-4-3 for it to work in the way that he wants? Um, I don't know. I think he'll stick, bro, but changing it to the 4-3-3, would he, would he go to that one? Mm. We're used to it, obviously. Liverpool, that's what we've been playing for how long Klopp's been here. Yeah. But I just I don't want to go. I've already seen it, bro. I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've already <laughs> seen it. I know what he can do, man. I, I don't care about it no more, man. I want to see something different. Whether nah, it will yeah. fail doing it, I just want to see something else, bro. I want to see the wing backs. I want to see a double pivot in there. And, and I know we've asked for that. I think a lot of people have asked, even if we went to the four two three one, that I wouldn't mind seeing either. 
in maybe like certain games tactically we change it, the four two three one. But I've already seen the four three three. Tired of it now, man. <laughs> we get we yeah because yeah no 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 tired of it. And said he's tired of clock. Uh, Dustin yeah, F. And... <laughs> <laughs> this is how I get back into trouble, boy. Uh, <laughs> do you do you prefer the way Alonso plays three or Amarim? Uh, I feel like they're both kind of similar. I prefer the I prefer the Alonso way. Yeah, I'll I understand it a bit more. To be fair, I think maybe that's what I, I got. I think I I understand it a bit more. Yeah, no, I still I think I, I would still prefer the Alonso. Um, the Alonso because it three. it doesn't you don't I've never seen Leverkusen look exploited in terms of from the fullback areas. So from when you showed us still earlier about these are this could be an issue in terms of leaving that space, I've never seen that with Alonso. Not saying it hasn't happened. I'm just saying I've not seen. Yeah, it. no, no, of course, yeah, yeah. it's not. A, it, it seems like a rarity more than. More yeah, than... like they do look very. And and the game I look back at is the game against um, Bayern and the shape that they had and the adjust like how he changed and adjusted in that game to mm -hmm. nullify Musiala, the guy that you want. To make sure he didn't have space to drip in. I swear you got problems. You've actually got problems. <laughs> but yeah, actually... no, I prefer the Alonso one if I had to pick one. I will agree with him. I definitely prefer that one. one uh, and last question. Yeah. Last one before we head out. You think Musialowski signs a new title? <laughs> He's what 20 now, man. I don't know, but I've been waiting for this kid for years since he was 17. I've been waiting for him to be given the opportunity, bro. Still hasn't. We saw like one game when he came on. Was it a, not a preseason game? Was it a Champions League game? When you Arthur, was, yeah, yeah. But I mean, before that, and it went. I'm talking about oh, when, he was oh, okay. when Arthur was around. Those times, oh, yeah, yeah. Little, young little run. And yeah, man, it was cooking up, man. I remember him, Harvey, with a nice little combination drop of the shoulder. And he's a cold player, man. It's just I don't know what happened. Whether it's the rumours are his dad was asking Klopp to play him because he believes his son was too good for the youth. The youth set up and, and Klopp told him, like, shut up, man, and wait. And, yeah, <laughs> not in that exact word, but... I know, yeah, yeah, but that, even... Dad was pushing, pushing too hard and he fell off and Klopp didn't like that. Hey, you heard it here first, man. Klopp leave him, man. Some players are going to be lo loving it, man. Boy, I can't. But that's like with any. I know that there's players at Manchester City as great as Pep is. If he's not giving them a chance, or mm. they don't obviously, they don't really push through too many youngsters. It is usually like one at a time over there. Whereas like Klopp will just try and do everything as like a big bundle kind of thing. Even when he's put through Trent, he tried to also put through others at the same give or take the same time, like Ben Woodburn and the Ibes and all of these kind of guys. He pushes them in and around the same time. Pep doesn't really do that. It's literally Oscar Bob will be the guy this year. Last year, it was Rico Lewis. Like, it's one player at a time. Like, I just hope in terms of when they do the handover side, when obviously the manager changes, and I know there's going to be a profile of, you know, a list of players, who's next, the upcomers, who's ready, who's not ready, who may need a loan. Mm -hmm. I just hope he's on one of the lists, maybe to be given an opportunity. Not not say he has to play, but maybe take him on preseason tour. See, see if he is good. Maybe yeah. he's maybe he's not as good as he used to be because there's not he, no one's really ranting and raving around him now. Like his name, his name's still there. I still feel like there's a player there, but I haven't watched him for ages. To be fair, and when he did get that minutes, it felt like he just came on and it was let me not lose the ball. Yeah, let me just keep it simple. Where I'm like, no, 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 bro, I don't care about that. Come on and cook someone up, man. Let me see if he still got it. Definitely agree, bro. I definitely agree. We'll ask this last question before before we head out. Uh, Krishna, do you believe that the signings of left centre-back, left wing-back and right wing will mean we can go again next season? I think that that's what they're asking. Do you think we can win the league? To be fair, you guys left didn't answer the question. You really made me answer. Right wing. Question, do you believe that signing of a left centre-back, left wing-back and a right back mean that we can go again next season? Yeah. Can't see why not, man. Because unless Tottenham come out of anywhere, maybe Man United improve, they probably won't. Um, Chelsea maybe, I don't know. But man, all we know that Man City, Arsenal will be on it again. 
Yeah. And if, if we if we're saying we improve, then why not? If we can compete with them now and we're saying then we improve upon that, then yeah, why should be. Yeah, why not? Guys, we've reached the end of the stream. I'd like to say big up to all the guys who came on the panel. Uh, big up Mike, big up Tom, big up my main man, big up ends every damn up, time. Um ends, let the people know. We um, got Papa, man. What you got Papa? tomorrow? Tomorrow, man. Tomorrow, call in show. You guys already know, man. Um, mm. where it gets emotional if Liverpool don't win a game of football. Um, yeah, man, call in, man. Love, I love the last one we did actually was really good, to be fair. I'm not saying all of them hasn't been good, um, but there was a lot of people that called in, bro. It was it was quite interesting to listen to everyone. Um, have a conversation without swearing, which was good. Um, oh, yeah, it was yeah, great. yeah, yeah, yeah. No yeah it was great. And I could see how hard it was for most people because they were just hot. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so swearing is just embedded into your keyboard now. You can't type uh, anything without swearing in it. I hear it, man. Um, but it was good. It was good. So call in tomorrow, and then I think the preview is the day. When do we play? Sunday? Yes. Yeah, so I'll do... Yeah, so call in tomorrow. The day after that will be a chill zone, um, which will be on a Friday. Saturday would be the preview for the Crystal Palace game. And then Sunday is the call in for that one as well. And that's uh, me. You heard it first. Make sure you've got Enza's notification bell on. Um, tomorrow, uh, this once this vid, uh, this stream has finished, guys, it will redirect you straight to my stream tomorrow morning. Uh, I'll do a quick preview on the game. It will just be myself, so it'll only be like 20 minutes. So if you guys are free in the morning, just come in just for a quick 20, 30 minutes where we do a little preview of the Atalanta game. Uh, and then what's that Thursday? I don't know when I'll do the reaction for it. It will either be that same evening or it'll be the next day. Um, in fact, no, it'll be the next day because I want to be on Enzo's calling to hear the meltdowns just in case there are any meltdowns. Yeah, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then Friday morning I will drop the drop the drop the match reaction. Friday evening is episode three of my football manager save. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that um anything you want to say to the people before we head out bro uh keep living good man enjoy the rest of your day guys that's what i like to hear guys we spoke a lot about ruben amarim i'm now done if it what if it isn't anybody on this panel that was here today i am not talking on anyone else's channel about ruben amarim so don't ask me <clears throat> don't shout me at least give me two weeks to get this out of my system Please. And make sure you smash a like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe. We out.